Alright, so where I left off with Feng was uh, back one was the next move on the list. So I'm gonna get started now. This is minute nine. Alright, so from what I remember last time with Feng, I almost never ran into a really bad move looking through his moves. Feng is fucking really good. He has a lot of really, lot of really, really good moves. Uh, the unfortunate thing about him, for, in my opinion, is... Uh, maybe unfortunate is not the right way to put it. What's up, Milo? There we go. Thank you. I was wondering if my chat was working or not. I was worried about that. Let's look at this so I could just close my phone out. Uh, I just started with part two. And uh, where I last left off was back one. It's the next one we're going to talk about. But in general, like, I very rarely saw any moves that I would call truly bad for Feng. One move where it's kind of whatever is this. But even that, I wouldn't call it a bad move per se. It's just he has better lows. Like, this isn't without its uses. Especially in some combos, you can pick up at odd angles with this. I know that. 3-3-4 um, three, three, is uh, also not a move that I would say is worth using in the neutral. But, of course, it's good for wall combos. If you want to end back turn and then they tech after a wall combo back turn, you get a back turn mix-up. Uh, and I don't remember what, a, what other move I said wasn't that great, but for the most part, he has, like, a lot of very usable moves. Sure, he has some variations of moves that maybe kind of like, oh, why would I use this over another move that does something similar? But even if you're going to say with Feng, it's good to have more options. You shouldn't always just use the best move for every situation. Sometimes, if you throw more moves at your opponent, which Feng is really good at, it can really uh, throw them off their game. You know, everybody knows the obvious shit with Feng. You, you know, even the relatively new people know shit. For example, down forward one being zero on block. That's like relatively well known by most players, right? This shit. Really cheap mid poke. A lot of people. Stand block. A lot of people know that that zero on block is what sets up this 10 frame back one, which I'm about to talk about. So everybody knows that. Um, you know, everybody knows about his stupid ass long range lows like this that good lows right uh most people know fish hook is really good and cheap uh 12 frame mid that tracks very well a mouse will be a homing poke and it has a lot of range so yeah everybody knows about that so that kind of stuff is obvious but does everybody know about like this for example zero on block does everybody know about that he kind of leans back so when he's spaced he might dodge a jab if people don't know about that, that doesn't look like a should be zero on block. So all of a sudden, you got another setup for back one. And then, he also goes into a low, but it's only negative 11 on block. Everybody knows about that low. I don't think everybody knows that that is zero on block, that first uh, hit. Uh, of course, the is bane of my existence. Can't fucking orbital it. <laughs> don't. Block. Uh, Brian's while standing launcher is not 14 frames, right? I forget. Well, whatever. Block punish it. You can't low period either because it's the shoulder. But yeah, um, so Feng just has a lot of really good options. Because then, like, to use my example there, down back one plus two. That's a 21 frame move. So you're wondering, oh, like, if that's zero on block, why don't I just use this 14 frame with that zero on block? Well, like I just explained, most people probably don't know that that's zero on block. So you can throw this out by itself and see how they react. I'm saying but just know that it's slow so now that I got all that out of the way we got back one one of the linchpins of Fen's offense and defense really when you think about it it's a move that you use either on offense or defense it's just one of those things that you have to remind people that you have to stop them from wanting to press buttons because it is a 10 frame high it is negative 10 but because it is a 10 frame high unless people are anticipating it or you're abusing it way too much it generally goes unpunished. Uh, you have to be like super sharp for like 10 frames and then 10 frame punish right away without wasting a frame. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the reason it's so scary, in case you don't know for some reason, is because on counter hit, you get a free dash up shoulder. Quick little short dash up shoulder, right? And if you're new to Tekken and you're playing as Feng, you want an easier way to do that. When you input back one, hold down the one button. When you hold down the one button, and while you're holding it down, press back plus two while holding down one button. You get a shoulder back plus one plus two. That's a universal buffering trick for tech. So if you input back one, always hold the one and get ready to confer if you get a counter here. The cool thing is that got an indirect buff in this game because when you exchange on the same frame attacks, 
you still get you both still get counter hit properties so for example he's got like this zero on block situation he's got that zero on block situation if they jab you're still gonna get a shoulder straight up right so you're still gonna get the counter hit and then you could get the dash of shoulder so like that just gives them even more situations to use this and then of course defensively you can use it too if people do something like a, a jab on block into like a down forward one poke a 13 or 14 frame down for one this will interrupt that that's totally an option you could use that shouldn't be your number one go-to option you kind of like should only be doing that when you have a good read but uh you do have to remind your opponent that you have that although most people that know this matchup even a little bit know to look out for this but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you know to look out for it. it's good for a reason it's still very good you gotta remind them uh but the counter properties are what makes this move good. It's only plus one on hit, and it's only 17 damage. It's not much, uh, m not much for damage by itself on normal hit. Uh, I don't think this tracks. Yeah, no tracking on this. And then of course, like I said, you gotta, you gotta be quick, but you can block punish that. Yeah, that's all the, and the range is also bad like in a lot of situations if people are looking out for it the ideal thing to do in my opinion when you like get really good and comfortable with this matchup is to make it whiff by moving uh backwards or sidestepping but really it's all it takes is holding back like if i just do this or even the popular follow-up right all right so then i'm just trying to see if holding back is good enough but it's not but back dashing is right and then that's not a hot kick but even that one Oops. right Oops. yeah the back dash better than that it has more reason it seems but yeah it's definitely not great on whiff oh huh, not that bad yeah no not that bad it's not punishing but you could definitely uh fit in a 15 14 frame launcher in there whether it be a jet upper milo or uh, a hop kick you could fit that in there and punish him in time so yeah back one is still a very good move one of feng's best moves top 10 move easily for feng and you need to know it and you need to be able to convert it 44 damage for 10 frame counter hit is a lot of damage and then if he has the uh rage uh 48 and if you do the 50 now this, in this instance, it doesn't seem to push you away, so it doesn't seem like you'll get anything for free at the wall. Yeah, not really. Doesn't seem like you get anything for free in that instance, but still. It's, it does add more damage than usual. So back one is really good. Alright, so next on the list, we got back two. Ah, uh, now this is the start of that string, right? Back two, three, four, two. <sighs> mid, low, yeah. mid, mid. Now, here's where I wish we had a Feng player around because there's a setup with this. Ah, yes. The three hits. So, if you saw what just happened there. Back two, three, four, right? The, th the three hits of this four hit string. If you do a down forward one whiff, Right after you connect this, the third hit, which sends them in the air. And if they tech, for some weird reason, off of this specific string knockdown, if they tech, their back is to you if you do a down forward one to screw you, right? For whatever reason. Well, it's a little weird. It's a little finicky. I got it the first time. Back two, three, four. Uh, it's kind of access dependent There it is Something all right, what's going on here? This kind of weird shits with Tekken. Uh, you could consider it a glitch It has to do with the way the game detects. It's more like an unintended thing that happens because of the way The game detects certain things during tech. So the thing about Feng is he causes all sorts of weird situations to happen There's another infamous one with him with this move where if it, uh, if you do it at the same time as another player does a move with forward movement built into the move, a move that propels them forward for some reason, they'll clip through each other. It happens 
more often than you would think. This is another example of that. Feng's down forward one moves him forward. And something about the way the game detects his forward movement, uh, which coincides with the timing of the opponent teching off the floor, it registers maybe as his body or part of his hurt box appearing on the other side of the opponent so they're facing away. That's kind. Of, that's really truly what's going on in the mechanical sense. It's obviously unintended, but that's just, that's just the nature of Feng. He has all these moves that make him move forward and back and shit. And you'll get weird ass unintended shit like that. And uh, yeah, this is this is one of them. See now there I got you have to be like perfectly uh, on axis with their back it seems like. See? It's fucking weird. What can I say? And for good measure I have him tech the other way too. So it's not just the same one. Like, Feng's always been like this. He's always been weird like in this way. I don't know if he's always had this set up. He had it in tag, too. I don't know if he had it in six. If he even had the string in six. Oh, see? It works the other way, too. And then you should know what your hop kick combo is in that situation. I don't know what it'll be. But because it'll be like this, I assume it'll be some weird shit like, you know, down forward one jab, down back one four. Shoulder, right? Or four 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 three is it? Nope. Well, whatever the other combo would be in that situation, you should learn it if you're gonna be a Feng player. <clears throat> he might have a better mid option. It seems like it should be hot kick because doing anything slower like a four three four would probably give them time to do something about that. Just a guess. But, yeah, outside of that, uh, the first hit of this string, the startup, 17 frames, negative 11 on block. I didn't know that wasn't safe. Zero on hit, forces crouch on hit. But does not force crouch on block, negative 11. The second hit low is negative 11 also. And uh, zero on hits, plus eight on counter hit. For the second hit. Uh, oh, nice. You, get, you even get a unique animation. So if you want to confirm the counter hit visually. If the first hit is blocked. It seems like you can do that. First hit on counter hit makes a second hit combo. Oh, no way. It's natural combo. Oh, who the thunk it? I didn't know that. All right, the third hit is where the natural combo stop, stops. I'm assuming the second hit on counter hit will make the third hit combo. Yep, and that will give you the whole string, I'm guessing, right? So the third hit, the third hit is, it says negative 12. Yeah, negative 12 on the third hit. And of course it's knocked down otherwise. And then the last hit is negative six. The last hit forces crouch. Uh, on negative six on block, force crouch. Uh, plus four on hit, force crouch. And the same thing on counter hit. So if the second hit counter hits by itself, the whole th the rest of it is guaranteed. And basically, otherwise, you have to block it because it's all mids. There's no ducking it. So I know people just generally low parry the second hit. I want to see what else you can do. First, it has no tracking, and the string overall seems worse at tracking to Feng's right. Yeah, okay, so if he continues the string... Kind of can't do anything about it. You can uh, counter though. Yeah, see? 
counter. Oh wow, the parry doesn't work? Sabaki. Try to armor. Okay, you can definitely armor to the last hit. But what you really want to do is you want to low parry. After the first hit, low parry. Don't let him play that game. Because the moment you miss the low parry is pretty much the moment you just have to block the rest and he's safe. By the way, how's the volume levels? Let me know. <sighs> All right, so now that we got that string out of the way, it sounds pretty good. Do you have Tekken Bot? Oh shit, I do. I forgot to put it up. Sorry. Woo, Tekken Bot. Boom. Thank you. All right. So yeah, that's that string. Uh, in a neutral situation, it's kind of like gimmicky. I wouldn't overly rely on this too much, but that back turn situation, really good. It might be good for a wall combo too. And I think it might floor break, right? Yeah, that would definitely floor break. That also spikes old school style. It doesn't do the spike where you get the free hit unless they hold back. It does a regular ass spike. You use the set of Oki. All right, next we got back three, which has back three, three, mid high. It looks like he auto sidesteps to his left when he does it. You could probably get to someone's back real quick with this. You know, someone's side. Which might give him some free shit, because it's plus seven. So let's see. Uh, back three, three, mid, high, natural combo. Uh, plus three on the first one. Wait, what? Plus three, three, but I got more on the side? What the hell? Where did that plus seven come from? Tech about lying to me. All right, so it's plus three. Okay, you don't, you definitely don't get anything guaranteed then. When you get to their back. I take that back. I don't know why Tech about said plus seven before. Uh, but the second kick has counter hit properties. First kick is negative eight on block. Second kick is negative uh, six on block. Very delayable. Hit confirmable. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's hit confirmable. That's cool. So you never have to risk it, but then you could also get the counter hit on the second kick also, and uh, that could get you some nice counter hit damage. Right? You're gonna be all faxes though, because it automatically sidesteps, so you have to account for that in your juggle. Huh. So as far as tracking on this goes, I'm gonna assume it tracks to his left because he moves left, so you have to like step it weird probably. Right? That feels in jail. Yeah, okay. So it definitely goes towards his left because that's the way he goes with the move. That second kick might realign. Yeah, all right. Yeah, 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 be careful how you swing. If you swing too early, he's gonna clip you. Ooh. Weird. <sighs> all right, um, so that's that. And of course, if you piano, back plus three tilde four while holding back the whole time. 
Oh no, you don't have to hold back all the time. It says capital B here for some reason, making me think you have to hold back. But you could use this to go right into back turn also. It still does the auto sidestep. Just a little bit, it seems like. No, maybe not. Not really, actually. No, not really. Okay. If it does, it's not noticeable, not noticeable enough. But, you know. Back through, back plus three till the four. Piano that shit. Yeah. He is moving a little bit. See? We do it a few times, you can tell. So, yeah. You can definitely go back to him with that. So... That's that. Next, we got back four. Fish hook. Fish hook, fish hook, fish hook. I talked about this earlier. This shit is cheap. 12 frame mid poke. It's only plus still on hit, but it pushes out. So it's more about setting up whiff punishes than anything else. Like, you know, your actual frame traps are going to be easily avoided. Backdash, sidestepped, whatever, right? Um, but because it's so damn fast and it has such a nice juicy hitbox, it is very difficult to step this, even at the tip, I think. Like, if you can at all. I don't, I'm not sure if you can, to be honest with you. Can't even backdash it. You can backdash it down forward one here, but you can't backdash that. See, this shit is good. If you can step this, it's going to be like a weird... It's going to be one of those weird situations where, where you, the opponent does something that auto sidesteps. Which is better than a regular sidestep. It's a great round ending tool, yes indeed. To go with whatever low, which he, we already know he has a 14 frame low in down four. So, a great round ending mix up for pokes. This should be at the top of your priority list as far as round ending moves go. Fish hook and down four. And maybe up close to down forward one, but honestly I would go with fish hook above down forward one because it's much harder to make fish hook with. Much harder, even if you use it from like back here. It's like overall way more difficult to make fish up with. This is significantly easier to make with. Which, you know, at the end of a round gets you fucked if you're not careful. So yeah, fish hook is good. Negative dino on block. But if you get to the block just a tip, it's not the worst thing in the world. And if you wanna be a party animal, it is another setup for backswing blow so long as you don't delay it. But that's being a party animal. I wouldn't like recommend that too much. Just let let it get blocked and then we'll carry on. That's fine. It's not like they're right in your face. But, like backdash after it, you know. Don't really. I would recommend sidestepping, but backdash, sure. I would recommend that. Um. So yeah, a uh, nice chunk of damage too. Look at that. Fourteen damage. That's good damage. Why does it say 20 damage here? Fucking bullshit. RB Noe is crazy. That shit, if that shit did 20 damage, it would be OP. Alright, next. Shoulder! Shoulder is his actual 13 frame Punisher. It is his, uh... Arguably his best with Punisher because of the speed and distance he covers. A lot of range. What's his Iron Fortress? And, uh... His is Iron Fortress. Paul's is Iron Mountain, I think. I think that's how it works. It might be the other way around. But yeah. And if you hold it, of course, it's also his rage uh, drive. So the thing about this is you don't want to just throw this out there randomly too much. I mean, you can. But you got to realize that it's negative 19. This is another one of those that, like, it, it might catch some people sleeping. So they might not get a full launch block punish. Unless they're partially anticipating it. Because it just comes out like that. And you have to, like, input your punish right away. Um. But yeah, 30 damage is no joke. And it should always, when you're when you're dancing around, looking for shit uh, with punish at this range, the first thing on your mind should be shoulder. And then for the slower things, uh, the, the slower whiffs, the super obvious whiffs, maybe then you can throw out like a forward three, four. But that's actually fairly difficult because it's so slow. And hop kick's range is shit. Like you have to get really comfortable with his hop kick range to uh, really get a feel for when to use it as a whiff punisher. Because as you can see here, it's no good. But shoulder, shoulder got you covered. 
that's just one of Feng's weaknesses. I know a lot of Feng players like to like duck randomly to look for a wall standing free with punish because that has a lot of forward movement. So it'll help with it'll help with his range. Also, it's not as bad on block if you fuck up. So, and you can also input S quarter super forward three. But in general, shoulder, shoulder's the way to go. Um, I think it also could be used as a uh, well, not could be it is. It, it's his wall combo ender. In a lot of instances, you could do a one three and then shoulder as your wall combo to get a low wall hit off of the shoulder, or just a one two shoulder. Because one three sometimes is finicky. One two shoulder though is fine also. Less damage though. <clears throat> and uh, as far as the tracking goes, Ooh, look at that. A lot of forward movement on this one. It seems the cat stepped fairly well. I'm assuming it won't catch walk. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is really big, beefy hitbox. Uh, yeah, wow. That's actually good. <laughs> his shoulder tracks fairly well here. Damn. It's like he has to sidewalk left against his own shoulder. Maybe Lily will have an easier time sidewalking in both directions. I don't know about step though. But it seems to track fairly well. So shoulder is one of those that'll just clip people moving if they're not careful because it's so fast. If you want to risk throwing it out randomly. Of course, that's also why you could kind of throw out a random uh, rage drive shoulder too. It'll track in the same way, right? All right, so up back two is next. Oh, this is a weird ass move. It's a double hit, mid high. Natural combo. Negative 10 with pushback. Does not jail. What the fuck? What is this move? I, I don't even, I didn't even know this move exists. Uh, up back two. Negative 10, plus nine on hit. Plus, up to plus 10 if you got the second hit. What's up, Nomachius? Rage Drive usually has better track. Alright, well. Weird. So this is plus 9, but it pushes back. What's the speed on this? 16 frames? I don't know what this move is for, to be honest with you guys. I don't think I've ever seen this move in my life. Wall combo? It doesn't, it doesn't jail. Negative 10 with pushback. The second hit whiffs, it's awful on hit and on block. And you're forced to do the second hit no matter what. No counter hit properties to speak of. What is this fucking move? I don't know what this move is. This is a weird move. That move sucks. That move sucks. I don't know. Maybe you fake players out there could tell me what the hell the point of that move is. I have never once even tried to use this move exactly. What the fuck is that move? I, is this a new move in Tekken 7? Or has it just been around for a while and Feng players know that this move fucking sucks and they never use it? Whatever. It exists. Don't use it. Next. <laughs> Doesn't even track. Uh, back to this is unblockable. Like I did by accident earlier. Nothing much to say about that. It looks like a mid unblockable. Yeah, it looks like a middle block of And it looks like one of those where if you get it near the wall, he'll get a free follow-up because of the way they fall down. Right? You could probably get a down 4, 1 plus 2 near the wall, if I were to guess. Or maybe even better. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. No, a non-tracking unblockable. Next. Up to... Ah, this move. 
This is one of those moves that jumps early. No, it jumps on frame nine, just like a hop kick. This is what this is one of those moves you want to use when you want to show off. I think you see. I think this used to be a bound move. I think. <laughs> All right. Well, it does seem to start Jogos on normal hit. If I already guess, is that right? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Goofy looking move. Uh, it is plus two on block. Only shoulder. Alright, cool. 51 damage, plus on block. Uh, very, very slow at 38 frames. I don't know, maybe when they attack, if you go to something crazy, they'll have to block this if you time it right. When they attack, you'd have to do it pretty early, though. But, yeah, I don't know about this move. It's too slow. I don't think I would recommend this. If it were, like, 30 frame, under 30, like, 29, 28, or even 30 on the dot, like a Miguel back three, then I would say go for it every once in a while. But you have to input it as up to, it's almost 40 frames, and it looks like it has zero fucking range. Like, it doesn't look like it has very much range. And there's no reason it says tracking, because if it's 40 frames, it's not going to fucking track. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. Surprise, surprise, he doesn't turn in the air with me. Yeah, see? Don't let, that, don't let what you just saw fool you. This shit definitely doesn't track. See? The moment I see that he doesn't turn in the air with you, that shit don't track. It just has like a wide hitbox in that direction, I guess. Alright, next, uh, up back, up or up forward one. Alright, we talked about this a little bit last time. Some of you guys told me already the thing, the tech with this move. Uh, but the one thing that I noticed is this crushes, low crushes on frame six. That's three frames faster than a standard hop kick. Three frames yeah. faster than this trash, right? Um, this is a good move, right? Plus four on block, on, on hit, sorry, on regular hit. Negative seven on block. Still plus four on counter hit. But the reason to use this move is if you normal hit somebody on a uh, crouching opponent with this move, it gives you plus 12, which is a free fish hook or a free two four. You can do a fish hook, or you can do a 2-4, which is negative 1, but it pushes out. Right? Not to mention, it's only 18 frames, which is not fast, but it's not super slow either. One, two does not work because it just doesn't have a good enough hitbox, I guess. For, for whatever reason, even though two is also a high and 10 frames, it hits them in that situation. I don't know why. How fast is up forward three again? Uh, 21 frames. It is indeed slower. Only negative two. I haven't gotten to that yet, though. It looks like it's next uh, two moves away on the list. But there you go. Tech and boss says 21 frames. <clears throat> Let's test the tracking. Yeah, it didn't look like it should have any tracking, and I was right. No tracking on that. How it goes, decent move. Not amazing, but definitely has its uses. It's definitely a solid tool, you know? Uh, it, uh, if only it were plus 13, you would get a shoulder. <laughs> That's the true reward. But you could definitely visually confirm it hitting someone crouching because the standing hit animation, it doesn't force crouch, right? If it forced crouch, then it'd be fucked up because you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But you definitely have to look at, is the opponent crouching when I hit them? Are they in a crouching state? You could visually see that. And then when you see that, you could confirm your strength. Swig of water for the working man. All right. So yeah, decent move. 
Oh, there's a weird spike. All right, next up, up to the up four. Oh, this fucking move! Holy shit! The Scrub Feng special. Now Scrub Fangs are gonna abuse this move way too much, and I understand because it's cheap, right? It's like essentially safe on block, even though it's negative ten. The spacing fucks up his punish. See, it fucks up most characters' punish. Uh, Gigas will reach. I don't know if anybody else will, but Gigas will probably reach this, right? Um. A normal hit, it's plus three. On counter hit, it's still plus three, but if you happen to connect on Axis for some reason, which is unusual because he auto sidesteps left, you get a knockback like that, and if they're near the wall, you get a follow-up. I don't know if you get a follow-up otherwise, though. Mid-stage. If you do get a follow-up, it's hard to do. Yeah, you might not get a guaranteed follow-up. Not sure. But if uh, you're near the wall, you will definitely get a follow-up. Mid-stage, I don't know. I think you get a stomp, but it's blockable. So it's a mix-up. All right, well, that's cool. If you could get the stomp to come out and turn it into a mix-up. That's all right, but is his stomp super unsafe on block? Or is it like dragon off? His stomp is down plus three plus four, right? Oh, I want to see it hit him standing. Mm, it's whiffing. That makes me not like it. Uh, yeah, if it, it was when they text, uh, I wouldn't do the stomp. I would definitely force a mix-up if nah, not every you don't have to force a mix-up But every once in a while you, you, you can force a mix-up um, The reason I'm saying that you don't have to force a mix-up I kind of flip-flopped on this, but uh, I was watching Bronson stream What was it yesterday or two days ago and he was helping realist and he was talking about uh, How you don't have to force the frame advances and that is definitely something that I said before but I drew the line at like plus eight and plus nine where you get the true 50 50s where people can't sidestep shit basically any any sort of fast linear moves and I had it in my head I was like in that situation you should always force your mix up unless you you don't want to risk something unsafe right uh, but now I'm kind of going back on that uh, it goes back to like that uh, when JDCR used to stream tag too and he used to, he used to upload those um, advice videos he would give people advice and upload them to his YouTube and there was one he just called let it go and that's essentially what he was talking about in the, in his limited english at the time he speaks better english now uh but his, in his limited english at the time he was just saying yeah sure you got all these plus frames but like american style is like you always attack when you press plus flame plus frames you always like, press something and it just makes you more predictable it opens you up to more risk because you know it, even though you're at plus five even if you're gonna go for a stronger mix-up than something that involves jabs, it can probably be, be sidestepped in at least one direction. There's probably some, you know, doing nothing is the safest thing you could do. Pressing something is is where you start to get to unsafe territory because something can happen, right? If you think about it, even when I put myself at plus nine, I could throw a linear mid and be 100% safe. But if I wanna mix up, I have to throw out a low at some point. And you could get fucked up for a low, you know, whether it's block punished, right? And you eat a wall standing four, which is not a big deal or low parried and you eat a lot more or a low parry. It's a wall comp wall carry low parry. It's a floor break, you know, low parry. It's a rage art. There's a lot of ways to get fucked up for doing a low in this game. So essentially just putting yourself in plus frames and backing off. It does a lot of things, right? You know, it, it, it gives you info, keeps you safer. It opens up up to thinking, hey, maybe this is, if it can even, you know, even if you go in thinking, hey, maybe this guy doesn't know this matchup that well, or I don't know this guy doesn't know his matchup, but assume he doesn't, right? When people say, oh, assume this guy doesn't know a matchup, I think most people assume what that means is they should keep pressing buttons or go through their whole movements. There's another way to approach that. Do something that you know, like, oh, on hit, this shit is plus nine. It's like a one, one or some shit, or one, two, and it's plus nine. I don't think they know this, and I'm right in their face. So I'm going to press nothing for a while. 
and then they get too comfortable swinging at negative nine without even realizing it. And then when you get that, you know, you get them too comfortable swinging at negative nine, that's when you really just bam in one big read. Bam! Fuck their whole shit up, right? Later in the set. Just, you know, things like that. Thought process. So, yeah. That's why I just wanted to go on that little tangent there. I love that about Tekken. Me too, man. That's what, you know... There's a lot of ways to approach playing Tekken. You could do well being super aggro too. You know, doesn't mean you shouldn't be super aggro. But you should always think outside the box. You shouldn't always play the same way. You know? And that's part of thinking outside the box. That's why you see Korean players. They don't force shit every time. It's a whole lot of moving around, you know? And of course, Bronx was talking a lot about dash blocking. Which is something that I brought up before, but I never put as much emphasis as he does on it. Like, dash blocking, no matter which character you pick... It's a way to gather info on your opponent. Every character can do it. Dash blocking, as long as you don't fuck up your block timing, it's super safe. Just like movement in Tekken generally is safe is if you execute it well. Movement in Tekken is generally pretty safe. Very safe. You can feel free to kind of move around. And in dash blocking, it's just, it, you get a reaction. What is, what is my opponent going to do when I run in and do nothing? Right? And they do it a few times. Like, oh, they do nothing? Well, guess what? I get to come in for you for free then. I don't have to earn coming in with like a buttons from back here. You know, it's like footsies, it's like footsies, right? Footsies in a 2D, fi in a 2D fighting game, you're kind of dancing around, but you're, you're, the idea of footsies is you want to get here, right in your opponent's face. You want to go from here or back here, whatever it is in a 2D fighter, to here, right? To force your mix up in a 2D fighter, which would be throw versus, you know, whatever. Throw versus frame trap versus whatever for 2D, right? In Tekken, it's not about throws, but that doesn't mean that that's not important, right? You don't always want to get in your opponent's face. That's the cool thing about Tekken is you could be a threat from here. You could be a threat from, depending on your character, you could be a threat from here. You could be a threat from here, and you could be a threat from here. Here is where it gets weird. Not everybody could be a threat from here. But here, some, maybe half the cast could be a threat from here. But from here, everybody's a threat from here. You know, as long as you're using the right moves and you're moving around at the right distances, all it takes is for me just going, bam. And then back out. And I'm a threat again. Bam! Back out. I'm a threat again. Especially Feng. You know? I'm a threat from back uh, from back here. You know? I'm a threat from back here. As long as I have a low that can reach and a mid that can reach, I'm a threat from back here. You know what I'm saying? And of course, not always fish. Fish hook needs a little bit more. Uh, Needs to be a little closer. That doesn't mean that fish hook is not a threat from here, because all it takes is him dashing forward a tiny bit and going right to fish hook. It's not like a Street Fighter where a dash is a full-on commitment. You dash for X amount of frames and then you dash ends. That's not the case in Tekken. Tekken is I dash, I stop. I dash, I stop. So if I want to go, if I'm whiffing fish hook from here, I want to make fish hook a threat. All it takes is a little dash forward, and fish hook is a threat. That's every character in Tekken. Every character. Leo back 1-4 canceling it's a nothing is this shit gets people so spooked. I don't even Oh yeah, back 1-4, of course. The infamous back 1-4. Which opens up back 1-4 crotch dash for Leo, of course. That's like day one shit though, you're talking about. It's just you don't have to like that's character specific shit and that's good too. But you don't you know, you don't need character specific shit. I just realized something guys. Oh no, never mind. I I was seeing things there. Fang's stupid chain, like the chains hanging from his fist was wrapped around his fist, and I was like, is that barbed wire? <laughs> Mick Foley? Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter which character you're using. Everybody could do this. Everybody could dash and do nothing, man, and block. Not everybody could sidestep well. Not everybody could backdash as well, right? Not create as much space for the backdash. But everyone, whether you're Akuma, Eliza, Geese, Fang, Lily, doesn't matter. You Gigas, you could just dash up and block. They can all do that shit. You, I don't think you'd want to do that as Gigas too much, but <laughs> you could definitely do it if you want to. And if your defense is good enough and you're confident enough in your defense to not be scared of getting in people's faces that way, right? Like, oh, if they, but what if they do a low? Well, if it's like one of the super dangerous lows, it's probably going to be seeable, right? You know? So, yeah. You know. And the moment you start to get them to react, what do they react with? Is to have short range, but then you know what? Next time instead of doing this, I might do this. And then they do they do their thing and then BAM. 
right? It's the same concept as like when I was talking about dragging those while running two or just, you know, while running pressure moves, your, your slash kicks and shit. But mainly while running two because it's hard to sidestep. The idea is it lets dragging off run in your face easier get in your face a lot easier those those really good running moves that that's really one of the cool, one of the best things that they do in my opinion it's not the only thing that they do but it's one of the best things that they do and yeah but you don't need those to do that that that's what's important you don't like like uh bronson was telling realists that like realist was bringing up how he used to be a julia player and for those of you that don't know about julia aka jc and tag two She's infamous for a move called... She's infamous for a lot of reasons. But there's a move she has called Party Crasher. Forward, forward, one. It's a fucking, like, 11, 12 frame elbow. Which doesn't come out that fast. It's because it's a forward, forward move. But it's like a very fast el elbow that was only, like, negative three on block. Which was even more fucked up in DR because she was an 8-frame jabber. That was back when 8-frame jabs exist. Now it's, like, 10-frame jabs, right? Ever since Tekken 6. Uh, but still, like, negative three, negative three on block. And then she gets a built-in follow-up as a further deterrent for, for you to stop pressing buttons, that makes her a threat with a mid that knocks down from here. And she's like, bam, it's like built into her dash. So it was like, fuck, if she dashes in, I gotta like sidestep at the perfect timing. I can't like challenge that with buttons, basically. Or if I can, I have to like, you know, it's very uh, specific timing. So generally you didn't see like, you know, it was a very annoying thing to deal with, right? So he was talking about like how, you know, he relied on that. They were talking about how he relied on that kind of shit too much to get in. Same thing for Dragon Ball players. They probably rely too much on while running too. Cause Zumi players probably rely too much on while running too. You know, think about all, all those fucking approaching moves. Uh, Elisa players. Are you kidding me? How many fucking dash moves, does she, dash punches, armor dash punches, dash push, whatever the fuck it is, dash low. You, you, that's all they fucking do. <laughs> You know, and it's like, all right, well, now if uh, if I'm good enough at this match to take that away from you and you have to get in on me the old fashioned way, do you know how to do that? You know, and if you don't go, guess what? That's on you for not like being a complete player, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> uh. So we were talking about up forward two. So up forward two is really cheap. I believe it also punch parries, right? Or at least it used to. I don't know if it still does. Because the animation, you see how his left arm goes up like this? At one point, this was a punch parry. I don't know if it still is. Okay, not in this game. So it's just an evasive move. But it was before, right? I'm not, I'm not wrong about that, right? Yeah. Point being, in this game, it's about the evasiveness of the move. And uh, I forgot what move it was last time where it tracked to Feng's right side, unless he did this move. <laughs> so this move is better than his regular sidestep left. I was able to verify that last time. It'll get around shit that sometimes uh, stepping won't be able to get around. Not sure, started in second seven. All right, well, I think it was. I think in Tag 2 or Tekken 6 it was, but it doesn't matter because it's not now. Um, now it's all about the stupid evasiveness. So yeah, so it is better than a, than a regular side step. Uh, it's only plus three, so even if he hits on the side like that, I don't think he gets anything for free. Right. Yeah, no, I don't think he gets anything for free. He would probably need, like, plus five to get a shoulder for free, if I already guess, or plus six. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that this move is generally, you know, it can be used as a crutch, so be careful with that. You know, don't always throw it out. The counter to this move is uh, sidestepping the opposite way that he's going. He automatically sidesteps left, so you don't want to go to your right if you're going against thing. You want to go to your left if that move is coming. Another thing, it has like negative range. Well, maybe not negative range, but it barely sticks out, right? And he's all and he's sidestepping off axis, which gives it even less range. So basically, this one little back dash, you make it whiff. It's a big whiff, so you can punish it pretty damn hard. So if you're anticipating, fuck, like, this, my opponent keeps using this fucking move when I press buttons. All you need to do is to make it whiff one time and punish it with a launcher, and you will make up for all of that damage. All the time, your opponent can you with, like, fucking four or five of these. All it takes is to make it whiff one time to get all that back and then some with fucking interest on them. 
Just make sure you launch it. Don't like punish it with, with some trash, you know, launch it. It's a pretty slow recovery move. <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's not a bad move, it's a, it's a good move. <sighs> Delicious water. Next up on the list, up forward three, this one was brought up earlier. He gets a free follow-up, right? Is it just uh, the head sprint? Alright, that looks guaranteed. I don't think he gets a juggle off of this. Uh, this is 21 frames. It low crushes on frame 9, like a hop kick. Negative 2 on block. Yeah, head spring is free. Okay, cool. Uh, Sit there on counter hit. It does the sideways knockdown, which means we're going to check to my right. We're going to check it at the wall. Anytime you see that sort of knockdown, check it with the wall to your side. In the direction, yeah, make sure that the direction the opponent is going towards is the wall to test the stuff. You know, so you don't know, for example, Dragonov, his up forward four, uh, knocks people away towards Dragonov's right. So if the wall is in that direction, he gets a full juggle instead of just the stirring that he usually gets. And then his back plus three plus four knocks people to his left in that in that way. So he gets a full juggle if the wall is to his left. Paul's another one. Back one, two. Knocks him away now to Paul's left side. He gets a free demolition, man. Not a juggle, but demo, man. Off of a safe 12 frame homing move. Safe on block, but duckable. But it's a lot of damage. It hurts. And there's other examples, too. What do you know? The other knockdown I saw that way didn't work, but. And then whatever. Whatever the juggle is. So you can pick up with that. What else can you pick up with? Yeah, see? Told you. Always, always check when you see that sort of knockdown. They don't all guarantee something, but most do. It might just be his w 1 plus 4. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, the way he gets knocked down, it might just be 1 plus 4 that picks up for a full juggle. See, I told you, 1 plus 4 is a good combo for this. So even though it's not a particularly great move in a neutral situation, and even then I would say it's not a useless move in a neutral situation, it has good uses in like odd angle juggles like that because it picks up reliably. Low damage, but it does pick up. <clears throat> All right. State select. I don't ever think to try that. Well, that's that's one of the cool things about exploring the cast. Dragon Off used to be my secondary, and that's when I learned about that kind of stuff. Because Marduk didn't have that kind of thing, but Dragon Off does. He's got two. I can't think of any other examples at the moment, but there are more. This is any time I see that animation, I think to test that. Uh, uh, Feng had another move earlier that did that. I forget what it was, but it didn't give him anything for free. That one. Oh, yeah, the homing move. Yeah, the homing move. The homing move, unfortunately, you get nothing. You, you only get the head spray. You only get the... That. But a 4-3, you totally get it. Maybe because it leaves him closer. Maybe because he recovers a little faster. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, up forward 3. Let's test the tracking on this. Uh, if this were to track, it would probably be in the other direction, right? Yeah, because it looks like it should. Alright, let's just walk. Alright, that looks good for his left side. For, um, it's slow, but it's a zero. What is it? Negative two on block, three active frames, so it could be zero. And it's a mid. Oh, oh. Oh, it's just one of those. Just one of those. <laughs> Tekken. This particular Tekken game is weird about this stuff. So it's not. It's a little finicky. Well, this is a reminder. You could add tracking by side steps to realign or holding forward or even holding back. As long as you're moving, you're realigning. So. 
but doing it right away, it's inconsistent for, for walk. But for step, it seems good. Step, it seems very good. Alright. You'd have to step guard, basically, because it's slow enough. But for walk, it's finicky. It could just be affecting because he's not small. He's considered, like, upper mid in size, I think. Because he gets hit by weird shit sometimes. I think he was one of the characters that um, was able to get a fully uh, fully juggled by Dragon Ball's down back three in Tag 2 and Tekken 6. Like uh, King and Armor King, I think, were other ones. They're considered a bit bigger than your average size. But not, like, big, you know? Alright, so that's up forward three. Pretty good move still. Damn. Slower? Why is he not getting four till the three? That's pretty damning. Negative four. All right, well, I wouldn't use the double head spring there. After the first one connects, I will do a standard mix-up for Oki. You know, just go up into a standard low. Don't get don't get crazy with the head spring, because if you time it wrong, if you don't dash, you're going to, like, whiff the head spring, and then they're going to hit you on the side or on the back, depending on how they get up. <sighs> All right, so... That's up forward three. Next is up back four. Okay. Retreating hop kick doesn't knock down. Negative on hit, but you're moving backwards. Doesn't matter. The hitbox on his hop kick is too shitty. I wouldn't recommend his retreating hop kick. Neutral jump hop kick is a standard one. Knocks back. Counter hit launch. Okay. But it's still negative 13. But it doesn't move him forward, so if you space this, which you can't really do with his shitty range on his hot kick. So, really, his neutral joke hot kick is whatever. Some neutral joke hot kicks are cool, because even though they're negative 13, because they don't move forward, you, you can space them so they can't be punished. Fangs is not one of them. I mean, maybe you can, but the range on it sucks too much. <clears throat> And then up four forces actual hop kick, standard hop kick, except like I said, the range is shitty. 15 frame startup, negative 13 on block. I still do this juggle for setups. Oop, not that. Right. Yeah, plus four, which means if you were to get hit, once again, you get a free fish hook. If you were to get hit in that situation, Teching, right? Let's just say cross guard. That was plus 12. Now, I didn't combo there, which makes me think it was too slow. I'll get it one time. Ugh. You gotta dash up slightly for it. Fish up! Combo, 39 damage. You just need to get plus 12 on this because there's 10 active frames on this shit. So if you hit on frame 9 or 10, active frame 9 or 10, you're going to get plus 12 or plus 13, which gives you a free fish hook. 12 frame in. Now, you could, you know, plus 13 would get you a shoulder, but you don't want to fuck that up. Just stay safe. Do the fish hook. So I'll just do a shoulder, which, you sure, it'll be like 50 damage or something, right? But uh, if you fuck up the timing, it's going to be negative 19. But man, would it hit hard. Uh, so anyway. Man, this move is so fucking cool. It's really one of like the best tools any character was given in Tekken 6. This move, so many uses for this move. Four tilde tree. Next on the list is up uh, up four three plus four. Ah, this move. This move is weird. Now, according to RB Norway, the startup on this is 24 frames, right for the first hit. 
Um, obviously it launches. But does he get a juggle? He does. Okay. The damage is going to be shit because that move automatically takes away your 70% scaling. See the third hit? 7 damage, 70%. So your follow-up is automatically going to be weaker. Uh, the thing about this move, though, is... Although... Although it's negative 16 on block, it has a built-in follow-up. It is a high, but I'm guessing it's not interruptible. Three, right? Negative six on block. And you don't... Uh, you probably will get a wall splat, maybe. But no combos. No standard combos mid-stage. Um... And yeah, sure, you can confirm that last hit, but why would you want, you know, you wouldn't want to do that. The purpose of that last hit is to catch people trying to punish it, which means it's like kind of gimmicky. I, I don't know how good this really is. It definitely is going to crush highs. Uh, a 4 3 plus 4, it says it jumps on frame 33, so it's not a good low crush. It doesn't say about ducking frames, though, even though it looks like it's a good crush. According to this, if the third hit misses, it's negative 16. But if the third hit is blocked, it's mid high high. Oh, okay, I see. The first two hits are blocked. I don't know how the third hit could be blocked. Maybe on big characters. Right? Let's see about Jack and Gigas. Because if it's only negative 10 on them, it might not be bad. Or terrible, at least. Oh boy. Also, the kick in the end knocks down on normal and counter hit. It just says knockdown. I don't know about juggle. Aha! Uh -huh. Wait. I hear it. There it is. See? Negative 10. Yeah, it jails. Of course, that added kick in the end one, right? Can I see? Ooh, guaranteed follow up? No, no guaranteed follow -up. Not even on counter hit. Okay. So no guarantee follow. They can hold back on that. If they don't, you'll get like a shoulder, obviously. Still though, you know, on characters like Gigas. Alright, so it's some it takes a bit to duck, but it does duck. See, it's just not instant. But in the middle of the move, it definitely goes under under highs. What's up, Sub Zero? How's it going? I'm about an hour in at this point. So hey, on big characters, maybe this isn't the worst. Let's see about Jack. Yeah, four three plus four. Uh, it's negative 16 if the second hit is blocked and the third hit whiffs. But if the third hit is blocked, it's negative 10. Gigas is forced to block the third hit because he's tall. I'm going to test it on Jack. Now the stances are in the end. I go by the RB Norway list and they always list stance moves in the end. Right before the th well, they don't list the throws, but I do the stats was before the throws. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Jack is negative ten every time. 
And even when I backdash, look at that. Very consistent. Off axis? So, you know what? Since this jails, right? This might not be, you know, might not be too bad. It's uh, slow, obviously. Right? Because these characters, are they going to step, you know? Are they going to step it? If, even if it is like linear? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at that. Sure, he got around the first hit. He had to block the rest. Oh, boy. <laughs> Alright, that you don't want that to happen. Alright, hey, there we go. Slow enough, huh? So maybe on uh, some other tall characters, like a Shaheen, maybe. Shaheen, Claudio, Miguel. Let's try Shaheen. Shaheen is cool in that he's a very straightforward character, but he has, uh, if execution, if you get a hard on for execution, he has one, like, really big execution barrier, but just one, and it makes his down three and his slide better, and some of his juggles better. It's obviously the down three cancel, it's the cancel, the, it's not, not just off a of down three, but it's the fucking step cancel that you gotta do. Nope. So only the really big boys. 16. See? Negative 16. Now maybe there maybe there's some weird instances where certain other characters will be forced to block the last hit. For some sort of weird reason. Because the forward metal of the move has some mini tracking. I think it's just because the move is so slow. That a step will not be enough. A walk will probably always get around it. Just if I were, if I were to guess. Slow moves, you can't just test it in like a zero or a negative one situation. Like a 25 frame move, I can't just go one, two. And then throw out a 25 frame move. And then, oh, I guess they can't step it. Yeah, they can't, but you have to time your step. Right? If the move is so slow that you're essentially timing your step too early. In like a zero or a negative one, negative three situation. So you can't really test that in that manner. <laughs> Unless the move is super duper linear. Right? Like most forward momentum moves don't realign as they as they animate. Unless it's a homing move. You know, like Marduk's back two. In the uh, last two games. But if I were to time this, see, he's not he's not realigning. So. Even though he hits me with the second hit, Look at that, I get free follow. Uh, so we're based on a read, like specifically answering what you think they're gonna do. Sure. All right, so that's that move. Um, I'd say it's good. It, well, it's all right for big characters, Gigas and Jack. But it's only negative 10, it does go under highs, maybe not instantly, but if you kind of just throw it out from like back here, and just, just throw it out there, it's not bad. Uh, and of course, on any other character, if you do the, the last hit, which is a three, it'll, uh, it, it'll catch them if they try to punish it. But they could duck it. So that's, and it'll fuck up your combo if you do connect. So that's that, next, four, four, two, bam. Uh, this covers a lot of range because of the way he swings it. Kind of like, a, you know, a Jin forward forward two, basically. He just kind of sticks his fist out there. Nice tuck of damage, 25 damage. Uh, it is negative 10 on block, but I think this pushes back, right? 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, from here. Okay, no, nah, he could punish that. Yeah, he could punish that. Yeah, see, if you space it, then punishing it gets weird. Although Feng's jab rage is kind of shitty in general. His one jab, specifically. We confirmed that also. Okay, no inherent tracking to his rights. Okay, some inherent tracking to his left. All right. So now is where we get to talk about what I always talk about with these forward forward moves. Any move you see that has a forward forward or while running input, all you have to do because movement always realigns your character, movement of any variety, is uh, hold the second forward just a little bit. And that allows you to still do the move. See? Forward forward, bam. You don't have to go forward forward, bam. So for example, right? Oh, uh, he has a block here. Right? He's going around it, right? But if I hold oops. if I hold forward a little bit, all of a sudden he can't. He has to block it. See? Now it's not hitting him because the AI sets a step guard basically, but this is and in that instance his step guard is too slow. Because he's trying to do a full side step. You can still cancel your side step earlier than that. But point being it helps you realign any forward forward move. Any, 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 any forward forward move. As for moves like this that track to one side wall but don't track to the other side wall, that's you know you basically turn them into moves that track both sides. The point, uh, the problem is the or the trade off rather, not the problem. The trade off is to make it track like that, you have to slow down that move, which opens you up further to getting to running into buttons when you go in. That's the you know lasagna layers. That's the trade off. That's that's anything. That's not just exclusive to moves like that. That's just anything in second. It's all timing based, like an actual combat sport. Think about it that way. If you if you're if you've taken up boxing or MMA on the side or some shit, it's all about timing. You gotta find your opponent's timing, rhythm, as they say. Sure, you could flail around yeah. with shit, yeah. right? You could totally flail around and shit, and then you might fuck your opponent up, right? And they don't know any better. But the better opponent you're fighting, the more you need to like get in the uh, get their rhythm, their timing down, and that tells you when it's cool to swing. Those kinds of moves. Basically, in a lower level, you're more inclined to run. Uh, you have a higher chance of running somebody that's gonna mash when you try to slow down your moves for tracking, right? There's a higher chance at a lower level they're gonna run to a masher. <clears throat> All right, uh, four, four, three is next. We talked about four, four, two, right? It knocks down on normal hit. It's especially good at the wall. And then, oops, and on counter hit, it also knocks down. Right? Okay, yeah. And it's 25 versus 30 damage. Not much else to say about it. Yeah. I don't think it's, you know, has good range. He moves forward and he steps forward a lot to do it. So it's a lot of range. Next on the list is four, four, three. This is plus four on block with two active frames, which is odd because it looks like it should have more. Um, four, four, three. It hits grounded. Uh, forces crouch. Plus four force crouch on block and plus eight force crouch on hit. And then on counter hit. Guaranteed stomp, right? 19 damage. Only a stomp, I guess. There might be some setups if you hit people with other stuff. Like, or if you sacrifice the guaranteed follow-up, you might have some sort of fucked up setup. I don't know. You know, like it, you know. Part of say if you recovered a little bit quicker and he did this, you might end up behind them if they try to get up, but that's not the case here. You can't jump over them, so. I don't know. If there is something, I don't know. So yeah, maybe you should just take the guaranteed stomp for like 45 or whatever damage it is. What is it? 35 plus 19. Oh, sorry. 36 plus 19. Whatever the fuck that is, right? Uh, 46, uh, 50, 
55, whatever. My math sucks. Um, but yeah, over 50 damage. So that's good damage. And it's also a move you use for, uh, one of the moves you use for Oki. It's one of the slower ones, but it does hit grounded. And if they were to mash getting up at the wrong time and you interrupt them on the mash, bam, you're gonna, you know, you get the free stomp. So it's pretty good. Pretty good move. I wouldn't use it too much in a neutral situation because it is 32 frames of startup. I use it more as an Oki tool. I don't think it tracks either. Once again, it's, a, it's too slow to test off a step. It's definitely what it track, I think. It is a forward forward move, so it can realign, but it's already slow enough as it is. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. I have to delay my step a little bit to go to my left. But I can definitely get around it. And for the right side, I don't have to delay my step at all. Follow tech rows. Yes, this is one of those plus on block moves is great for people that tech. But the plus side is it's plus on block. It hits grounded and it has counter hit reward. Bonus counter hit reward. And it forces crouch. A lot of positives for this move. So this is like a really good Oki tool. Yeah. That's really what this is. And Feng has a lot of good Oki tools. Similar to Lily, two back-to-back -back characters with some good, really good-ass Oki tools. In different ways, though. Not in the same way as Lily, yeah. but... <sighs> yeah, Feng's a beast in that aspect. Alright, so next is forward, forward, four. Okay, this is a weird move. Forward, forward, four has a couple of followers. Forward, forward, four, three. Which is very delayable. And uh, that's important, and I'll explain why in a bit. And then forward, forward, four... Down three? I don't know what forward forward four down three is. RB Norway says forward forward four down three. That doesn't make sense. It must mean delayed three. Fourteen. Yeah, it means delayed three. I don't know why they're labeling it as D three. It's supposed to be, I think, a um a greater than sign or a less than sign that indicates delay in second terminology, I think. So, this move's important to delay for several reasons, right? Number one, the only way to ju You can juggle off of the 444 by itself. 444 by itself, 19 frames startup, negative 15 on block, right? We can, we can totally juggle after 444 by itself, right? Um, of course, it has to be something fast because you recover kind of slow. So, you can't get the 4 1 plus 2. Um, if you do 4443 right away. Uh, you get like a shoulder, but I don't think you can jump. Right? No, you don't get a normal jump. Uh, not, not only that, it's negative 14 on block. Right? Uh, the second hit by itself, though, does get you a jump. It seems to recover a little bit faster, but not fast enough to get forward plus two. It is a lot of damage though, 21 damage, which because it will, it, they made it that way so you get good damage off of the actual juggle. But if you delay it, not only does that make it negative 12, that allows you to juggle. And that allows you to get that. That doesn't allow you to do the Oki juggle that I was doing before. Can't go right into forward three four size to the right forward three four jab forward three four off of that because the second hit the three the late three is already taking up your first post launch hit. So I don't know what the best juggle would actually be off of that. <sighs> So let's see. If I don't delay, it interrupts. Makes sense. If I do delay, I could interrupt it. I could interrupt with, uh, sorry, exchange for 13 frames. 
could beat him out with that slow soul frame. And then of course I could block. I could also sidestep. So that's the trade-off. Very weird move. He's had this since I think Tekken 6. He might have had this in 5 in DR, I don't remember. But this use this actually used to be his pose bound and their Tekken 6 in a lot of instances, I think. It would be this, the 444 delayed three into shoulder. And he can still do that here. Uh, the D snatch for delay on RB Norway. Yeah, I figured it out. Thank you. Thank you, boys. It's okay. 444, so you can get forward. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Talked about that already, KO. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah, you brought. Okay, it is. It's a 444 um, less than. Less than? Or greater than? How's that work? It's less than. Less than sign three. So less than sign indicates delay. RB Norway just shows it as B for some reason. So the trade off is yeah, you'll turn a second hit into a safer on block, still unsafe, but safer on block. And yeah, you'll turn it into a, allowing you to still juggle, right? But it could be interrupted and it could be stepped. And that's basically how this move works. It's fucking weird. And of course, you know, like I said before, if you wanted a. If you delay that second hit, you'll you could land a shoulder. You look at that. Just that alone did 72 damage. 72 damage for that. When my Oki juggle is so yeah, 73 for all those hits. Imagine like you know if I just like added some more hits in a standard ass juggle, right? That's too many hits. It's weird like that, but yeah. <clears throat> it's just 4443 just does a lot of damage. The, the three, really. It's the three. The three by itself. It's 21 damage. That's why. It used to be a really good, like, you know, right before, you know, right before you do the shoulder. It was the, the best ender. Not so much here outside of certain juggles. So I forgot what, what uh, I did one last time when I did screen part one, which I have not uploaded to the YouTube yet. But there was like off access juggles I think this is good for, right? When you hit him in the head, maybe. Like when you hit a back turn. Maybe not. I don't know. If you want to do the real BNB, it's 4434, 4, 4, 1 plus 2. 444, four, four, delay 3, 1, forward 3, 4. Wow, but that also give you the Oki too, wouldn't it? Do a deep dash uh, after the corkscrew. Hold on a second. Sorry, guys. Fuck. Why am I doing shoulder? Yeah, I'm not good at this. This delay shit is fucking me up. Alright, well, that's the juggle if you get good enough at the delay. I got the jab to connect the four, but I didn't get the four three. But it is 444, four, four, delay 3. Damn, that's... It's not easy to do, man. <laughs> There's no dash deep enough to make what you're trying to do work. Wait, what? Oh, wait, what? 
Oh shit! The fuck? Why did I think you were? Who cares about forward? Nah. Why did I read it like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Nah, I read that wrong. I read that wrong. Sorry, hold on a second. <laughs> my friend's gonna be pissed. My friend, my, 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 <laughs> my friend offered to get me Mario Aces, and I'm like, can you get me Project Doctor Pat instead? He's probably gonna get pissed at me for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're saying to do this, right? Oh, not that. Um. Got 74. Yeah, that's only one more damage. I mean, obviously, that's easy to do because it's possible. Alright, well, that does one more damage than this. Alright. And then the the right. Yeah, and you get the same Oki. Plus four. Well, yeah, it's a weird move. Good damage off of it. But that's that. Next, uh, we should test the tracking, right? The built-in tracking. Oh, my God. So it seems like it has some, some tracking to his uh, right side built-in. It's 19 frames, so this seems legit. So this seems to track really well. Even without the forward forward realigning, right? Yeah, this seems to track quite well. That's what actually makes this move good. All that weird ass shit aside, that could fuck with your opponent's punishment. So you can do the first hit by itself for tracking, and then every once in a blue moon. I don't think most people are gonna win, uh, launch punishments. I think they'll like, you know, jab or like 12 frame, you 13 frame. But I don't think most people are gonna go for a hop kick off of that. And then if they do, bam. Well, don't delay it. Bam, right? And if you counter hit on that second, oh, you don't need a counter hit on the second hit to launch it, but still. Oh shit, he said I. <laughs> All right, I don't have to worry about paying for a Project Octopath. Good looking out. All right, next we got Ford Ford One Pursuit. His armor move, this shit is cheap. It's slow though. So it's negative 12. If you don't charge it. And even if you charge it a little bit, it's still negative 12. But if you charge it the whole way, it's plus one. Right? So, no matter how much you, uh, same thing where it's like a knockback 21 damage, unless you charge it the whole way, you get that. And when you get that, there is guaranteed follow-ups at the wall, right? Very situational. Fully charged when he gets plus one. Yeah, I know that. It's very dangerous at the wall. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, it's very risky because it is an armor move and you can eat a lot of damage when you're fully charging this. But this is something that you could like do a lot with. Yeah, forward three four. I figured that would be it because it's plus twenty. Was well, twenty three? Yes, yeah, so you can get a forward three four at the wall and then you can just really fuck people up at the wall or near the wall point being it has to be close enough to the wall where this distance is closed it doesn't have to be pressed up against the wall necessarily but as long as you're close enough that your distance is close enough to get the forward three 
You're good to go. You can also shoulder and all that good shit. But why shoulder when you could do... Oh, they both do 30 damage. They both do 30 damage. Go figure. Damn, that's a strong monster. Shit. 30 damage. And despite it being two hits, they're two grounded hits. So it's going to be 100%. It's 70% anyway. Uh, you know? So it doesn't matter. Alright. So that's really the whole thing about that move. Uh... 23 frames without any delay. Yeah. Very linear. As I expected. Okay. And the reason they make it so slow is because it's a mid-armor move. The, the, the way they seem to be balancing these armor moves is if it's mid and it's very strong in a lot of ways, they're going to make it unsafe. This is a special case where it could be made plus, not just safe. So they're like, all right, we're going to do that. We're going to make it slow as fuck, right? Similar to, like, for example, the weakness of Horang's uh, um, armor homing high kick that's safe on block is that you essentially could jab it and still duck in time. You could even, like, mid-poke it and still duck in time. As long as you don't fully commit to some crazy shit, you could duck in time. You could hit him and duck in time and then launch him. It's just you got to get used to doing that. That's all. All right, so next is back forward one. Yes, okay. So this is his negative 15 backswing blow. As we verified last time, even when Feng puts itself at negative nine, even like point blank, you could do this and get away from like short range pokes pretty well. Anything long range is gonna hit you. Anything slow is gonna hit you when he tries to come back in. Knocks down on normal hit, gives him a juggle on counter hit. What is, uh, as far as what is the juggle is, he's, they're at an odd angle, so you're probably gonna have to do some weird ass shit. Right? Maybe not that. I don't know what the juggle would be. Ouch. Hit my thumb. What's the juggle? No. There's gotta be more than that. I think it's a full juggle. That can't be it. People just take the guaranteed 4-4-3. Alright, well that sucks. That looks like it would give good Oki in older games, but not in this game. Because it knocks him away. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what you did in older games, right? You did like forward 2-1 and it would hit him back turn. Or if they try to bar or if they try to back roll, it'll float them. It's better in tag two. I think down back one four. I was trying down back one four. If it does work, it's very strict. Yeah, that doesn't float up high enough. Also, they bounce on the floor, so it's not like a... I was hoping it would land on the other side. So if they were to tech, you'd be back turn. Oh. Uh, all right, well, that's pretty much it for that. It's not much else to say. It's a back swing blow. You know how it works. The cool thing about Fangs is he sticks his arm out pretty far. So it's not as short range as some of the other back swing blows. But it's a back swing blow. Another one of those that uh, lower level players use uh, a bit too much as a crutch because they can't stop pressing buttons. It has to be, oh, we're doing shit. And in the moment you block something, that or that, that, eh, you know, they can't stop pressing buttons, right? Um, and it works fairly often. That's why. So it's not useless, but don't, you know, don't let it turn into a crutch for you. Alright, next is his slash kick. 
Unique animation for his while running three. Yeah. Plus six. Six active frames. Plus six. Plus eleven. Hey. Oh, well, whatever. Um, I don't think his is uh, one of those that tracks to one side. Yeah. yeah. So this is not one of those that tracks all that great. But it's still a slash kick, still plus on block, so it's not bad. You just can't be, you know, this is partly, you can see, like, you, you, if you just look at my timing here when I sidestep this, the moment I see him running, I don't even need to fully commit, he you know, all that heavily to a sidestep. It's just, the moment I see him moving forward from way back there, it's like, oh, that's going to whiff, see? That's why I always tell you guys, when you do these running moves, you have to be able to threaten in various ranges with them. If though if you're only able to threaten from way back there in Karaho land, you really got nothing. Right? That's too early, but I essentially could on reaction, even online, the step your shit and really fuck you up really badly, right? So long as I'm sharp. I fuck that shit up all the time. Don't get me wrong, but you know, you gotta be able to do it from you don't have to do it from point point blank, but you gotta be able to do it from like here at least. Alright. Which I can't even right now. It's been a while, guys. You know? Point black is fine too, but as long as you can do it from here, and then here, and then here, and then here, you know? Yeah. Do two back dashes. Uh, there's a lot bad about his running three. Yeah, it has quite bad range. Eh, sure, it's still a running three. Um, tag two Feng was just way more fun in general, though. Eh, sure. Um, what's up, Bison? Anyway, so now we're gonna talk about the wild standing moves. First off, wild standing one, which is a very good move. There's a way to do this at a uh, you Feng players out there. There's a way. To, oh, I just did it by accident. How do you avoid getting Korosuka forward one and getting while standing one out of this? Okay, so it's like, okay, so it's like Dragonov. Okay, got it. Thank you. So this is like when you're doing Dragonov's while standing four out of count hit while running two. Down, down, forward, and you can just hold the down forward for a bit. And then as long as you let go of the down forward before you input one, you could uh, close in on people. So this is one of those things you could kind of use as a crush to get in people's faces. <laughs> like I talked about before when, when Bronson was talking to Realist about relying too much on Julia's party crasher elbow to get in on people. That's like a free way to get in on someone because it's negative one on block. It comes out at 14 frames. It's mid. He has like, even though it's negative one, he has a uh, built-in follow-up with some counter hit properties as a deterrent from mashing, a further deterrent, and at negative one, he could sidestep in either direction. It's perfectly fine. On top of all his other evasive, parrying bullshit, right? <clears throat> so, very good to learn this. It's very good. It moves forward a lot. It moves him forward a ton. Look at this. All the way from back here, I'm like, oh, well, you don't want to do that. But it also is, even if you get that by accident, you essentially are getting an accidental mix-up between that mid and the low. Because people are always looking for that low. Uh, I rarely use it. It's unsafe. What? While standing 1-2-1? One, one? While standing 1-2-1 one, one is good? Who cares if it's unsafe? You're trying to always play safe? Are you kidding me? You're never going to take a risk. Why should I be afraid of your offense, then? Unless you're Kazumi. <laughs> and even then. Ah, 
That last hit is 24 damage. Good chunk of damage. So, yeah, it's while standing 1 2 1, essentially. While standing 1 2 is a natural combo, only plus 1. But nice chunk of damage at 23. Negative 10 on block, and then a very delayable last hit. No counter hit properties on that because it'd probably be a bit too much. But it's only negative 12 if you, if you risk the last hit to stop people from mashing, even for, you know, mashing on the second hit too. But just the while standing one by itself is good. That's kind of what I'm saying, Bison. That's why all of this shit is there. You're kind of supposed to use all of the moves together in that sort of way. You can also delay the second hit, looks like, no? No, you can't. Not really. Well, a little bit. Not enough for it to really matter, though. There. There's, like, no gap between them. Now, I don't know if this has any inherent tracking. What can I use to test? Negative one? Negative one. Let's try that. Doesn't force crouch, right? Uh, oh, oh. All right. Okay, so the last hit turns a bit, but it's slow. But if you go the other way to his right side, that last hit will check you. No matter how much delay you or uh, slowdown you put on that, there's no way to get hit by the second hit after blocking the first. It essentially jails. Even though it's a mid-mid, it still jails. Same thing. Um, can you step the last hit? No delay, right? Probably not. Wow, it doesn't even let you do anything. You have to, you have to delay it, okay. So you have to delay it. You, there is a minimal amount of delay you have to put to stop that from being an option for your opponent. So you gotta be careful. But, you know, who's gonna be doing that? Alright, so you know you can do that now. Yep, good to know. Exactly. That's the point. Uh, next is, I mean, you know, I was going to say also, I guess that's his 14 frame while standing option. I don't know if he has anything better as an in-between from him launching you. But next we got while standing two. It's a knockdown on normal hits. Free down four, one plus two. Although, on some characters he can convert, including himself. Somebody brought this up last time, I forgot who. Down forward four. It's a down back one. Um, so this is one of those. Oh, what's the conversion? Um, down forward one. Fuck, what was the conversion? Down 
Yeah, it's a full combo, but what's the conversion? Dot forge for shoulder. Not on this character, at least. Nah, it's not forward one. It's just shoulder, then. There you go. If that doesn't work, maybe on some bigger characters you can get better stuff. Uh, but it, I guess most of the cast is probably just going to be that on normal hit. 32 damage, knockback. Near the wall, you probably get a full wall combo, right? But on counter hits, you get an actual conversion, right? Is that true? Or am I mistaking this for Bob's? Maybe not. Oh, maybe on counter hit it's the same. It's the same on counter hit. Huh, go figure. All right, let's, let's see here. Wall standing suit is 15 frames, so there's no reason to use it. <laughs> Outside of like a neutral, nah, I don't want to say that. Uh, as a block punish, there's no reason to use it. Let's put it that way. It is safe on block, so there's definitely reasons to use it. Also, range looks good. Well, uh, range looks okay. No track. Alright, look at this. Not bad, not in, in the way in the away from the move. It's one of those. Breaks the rules of real life physics. We got the electric rule here. <laughs> you wanna step towards the move. Yeah, covers left side. You rarely use it, you should use it. Good players use this shit all the time. Are you kidding me? Safe on block while standing option, 15 frames is not slow. This is one of those you just randomly duck and just toss that shit out. <laughs> You know? With free follow-ups? You know? <clears throat> you're, getting you're getting too greedy if this is not good enough for you, to be honest with you. If you can't find a way to fit this every once in a blue moon, you're getting greedy, in my opinion. Because then what that means is you're looking for big damage. You're looking for that. But that's unsafe. Let's keep going through his tracking here and his while standing stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So next on the list here is while standing Trey, which is negative 12 on block, 15 frames. This, uh, if you want to be a dirtbag online fang, you could duck after they block this because it's fucking weird punishing this move. Reason being, there's like no block stun. This is kind of like a hop kick, but it's one frame better. It's negative 12 instead of negative 13. So it's like old school hop kick before it's act two. And essentially there's like no block stun. So if you want to punish it, you got to block bam right away. So, and this move often just comes out in a neutral situation, <clears throat> right? Because they'll just do this sh shit like that. You'll see shit like that happen often. And even on whip, the moment he lands, he's pretty much recovering. It's kind of like a fucking orbital in that aspect. Um, as far as the tracking goes, his right side. Only for stepping, though. Okay. Well, at least in a, in a negative one situation. you know found yet another reason to use while standing to tracking <sighs> told you you could fit that into your kit uh, yeah that's pretty much while standing three so it's uh you can't do the go right into the forward one plus two looks like oh you can okay so you can do the old okie juggle then side step right And then plus four, and it's just like usual, if you connect, you get a free fish hook. Ugh. Woo, 
Come on, give it to me. That's plus 12. That should have given it to me. That was plus 11. I saw that. There it is. You got the links. You got the links. 39 damage. Just like usual, he gets the Oki Jumble. Whenever I see the ability to launch and go right into that, you know you can get that Jumble. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alright, so it has some step tracking to his right side. Also, you know, once again, just like usual, holding down forward, you see how you're moving, that realigns you. That always realigns you, just like movement does from standing. So even though it doesn't have any tracking to his left side, all it takes is I hold down forward a little bit and then I let it rock, right? And then all of a sudden it's gonna hit you for going in that direction. Right, like, see, so it hits, but, see? A lot of bad players get that by accident, and then it makes you wonder. But I'm stepping it, you know? They have to be mashing it out <laughs> for you to step. Um, next is while standing four. His is a bit better than most. It is 11 frames like usual. Two active frames, so 12. Plus four. It looks very linear. But the reason I'm saying it's better is because on counter hit, well, first of all, it's good damage. 21 damage on counter hit. And... You get plus 29. Guardable, plus 29. But still, plus 29. And this is not like Tekken 6 and Tag 2, whatever. Where you could tech that. I think this is plus 29 no matter what. So you could force your mix-ups, just like I talked about with down forward 1. You could force essentially the same kind of mix-ups. You can do whatever the fuck you want. As long as your input is clean enough that you can frame trap it all. You can do whatever you want. Gotta guess. Or the bra to tram mentality. You don't have to. <laughs> you can totally dash and do nothing, you know? <laughs> and then they're like, holy shit, what the fuck's gonna happen? And then I go low, you know? <laughs> Instead of just forcing your mix up right away. <laughs> Collect info or whatever. Uh anyway, next is oh let me test the tracking actually, sorry. I'm only using this to test because I don't know what else. That's plus. That's plus. It also looks like a shitty range. Yeah, so definitely no tracking on that. No tracking. Alright, next we got Full Crouch down forward one. Of course, he has a low from Full Crouch, which essentially means he has a Full Crouch mix-up. Now it is negative two on hit, but he knocks your ass down on counter hit. Very annoying move, right? He gets another one for free, I guess. Maybe something even better. Crouch cancel down, uh, stomp, maybe? Yeah, Crouch cancel stomp looks good. Uh, let me double check that on myself, actually, because of the way it knocks down. You might be able to block that. Nah, okay. I was testing, you know, the Lars shit. Those of you who don't know, Lars has an uh, armor move that knocks down that way. And you, if you hold down back, you are unable to block the stomp. You have to tap up and then hold down back. That's the fastest way to get up and block in that way. In that, in that, uh, off of that sort of knockdown. You have to tap up and then hold down back. But it's still guaranteed, so. You could crouch cancel, or you could just do another one if you're not confident in your crouch cancel for less damage. For five less damage. But it is negative two on hit, and you're crouching, which means you can only instantly sidestep towards the background. So. It's a full cross mix-up until it hits on normal hit, and then it gets weird. Oh yeah, also, 
you could do, yeah, it's much easier to do crouch dash four off of this. You don't have to do any input tricks. But while standing four, you can totally core circle forward four essentially. Core circle forward four essentially gives it to you. Or you could just do the core circle forward delay and then press four. So that's good too, actually. Thank you for bringing that up. So anyway, yeah, foot cross down forward one. Um, tracking, I don't think so. Yeah. Twenty-one frames. Okay. All right, look at this. Spacing, spacing. All right, so this pushes out enough that he gets around it. So spacing matters. As long as you're close, it's pretty good. Close to seems solid. From far away, you can get around the, the hit box in time. Or the hit bubble, or whatever you want to call it. 3D, man, 3D. If you want to go left on 2P after that, but remember, you can always move your left foot up forward 2 regardless of side. Oh, that's true. Wow. Interesting. That's true. All right, so uh, rule breaking, right? You From crouch, you can instantly do up, up forward, up back moves, right? From crouch, his up forward two, all those side steps, all those side steps left. So if he's on the two piece side and he wants to go left, he could do up forward two and go left. Thank you for that, KO. What the hell do you get a working Tekken bot? Uh, I, if you go to the GitHub page in the comments, right? There's a text file you got to update or some people will post a link up there. Uh, the link I gave Aris is dead, so I don't have the link anymore, but uh, it should be on the GitHub page. This is a, a file you got to update. Some people uploaded it again as an updated file. All right. So next is what I consider to be a very important move, and I'll go into why in a bit. The fucking Johnny Cage punch, right? So... This move is 18 frame startup, right? And it's a launcher on normal hit. What's the launcher? Recover's crouching? Recover's crouching. So while standing one, right? What's the best juggle off of this thing, players? I never see anyone do the full cross now for it soon. I'll tell you why. There's a reason to do it. But uh, first, just tell me, what's the, uh, it's very different depending on if you're 1P or 2P, that's weird. 1P, you need to cleanly crouch cancel for, <laughs> wow. But on 2P, you can fully sidestep to the back round. Fucking what? This is a situational move. I'll explain it in a bit. Man. What's the noob combo? This is not easy. Cross cancel with a dash or up? Yeah. Online. Give me the online shit. Thank you. Oh, hey, that's a better pickup for damage. All right. It's a, it's a whatever, right? It's a whatever the hell the ender would be.
Wow. I can't get it. I have to die for one then. What the fuck? Didn't I get it? Am I crazy? Oh. Alright. I have to. Yeah. Alright. So. You can do the easy jungle with fucking just while standing one. It's, it's a whatever, right? Uh, why is this move important? Well, first of all, it's 18 frames, and it's going to get you more damage than this. And this, when you block the heavy uh, stuff, like the, you know, the stuff that you can get this on, right? That Those in-between moves, but not only that. Hold up a second. My dog is barking. I think somebody's not... It might be housing. Uh, we got a water issue over here. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. My dog got locked in another room. <laughs> Somebody let him out. <sighs> so, the other thing about this move is situational. Now, we're talking very situational, right? This is the best example of this that um, I could think of right now. There's other instances of this. This isn't the only instance of this, but hold on, I'll show you. So knock this, right? I don't know how often you're gonna see him, but if you do, he has this very annoying look, right? <clears throat> I forgot how I had this. I did this whole run through of this fucking move. And I forgot how I had the spacing. Nope, nope. his longest range move from crouching right now this is super situational this is just one example but there are instances where your other shit is gonna whiff right but as long as you know that the move is oh negative 20 or whatever you can rely on that shit hitting him and it's gonna hit him hard 
Um, what do we got here? Oh, really? You could do it off of a cross dash? Um, oh, yeah. So, the reason I think it's important, especially as this move for this example, is because you can't low parry it. And even if I were to try to like crush it with a hop kick, it's not gonna work. Perfect. Right? So yeah, even though like uh, he does move forward a bit if you delay it, I think, but uh, it doesn't punish. But you're gonna get the punish reliably, no matter what spacing you're at. You're gonna get the punish with that shit. Another thing about this move, I think it crushes. Right? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But it is good for strings, I think. I don't know, Wall Standard 3 is probably better. Wall Standard 3, I think, is better as far as crushing goes, right? Yeah, see, yeah. Wall Standard 3 is better for crushing. It's just more a more rewarding option, I guess. But the important thing is the range. It's those situations where you're not close enough, where you're blocking the tip of a snake edge, for example. You're not close enough to get like a delayed hop kick, probably, right? Uh, even if you get a wall standing three, why not get a fucking Johnny Cage punch? You're gonna get more damage, you know? That's what that move is for. Of course, we're just talking about min-maxing at that point. If you land it on a two-piece side, you can do a fat sidestep and easily get the forward wolfers to pick up for max damage. Alright, that's cool. I guess it's because of the way they fall, right? Look at that. Essentially, nine more damage puts the same really good Oki. You still get the plus four. And if it were to hit, you still get the fish hook. So yeah, don't sleep on that move. Uh, in general, though, it's negative 14 on block. Which is not, you know, depending on the matchup, it's not a big deal. Although it's easier to punish than that, right? Oh, you talking about Brian's thing. Cross Council is something you gotta practice a lot because of how long the recovery of the move is. Yeah, that move is, uh, doesn't recover fast at all. It recovers quite slow. Yeah. It just has some blocks stuff going on. Anyway, uh, we got sidestep two. All right. Now we're going into the sidestep moves, guys. So sidestep two is a high 18. 50 frame startup and you recover back turn negative one only on block wow does it push back that much it's also homing which is nice and plus nine on hit but it pushes out plus one what rb norway getting their signs crossed it starts with a zero it doesn't start with a one rb norway that's a binary joke very nerdy i know 
So the cool thing about this pushback at plus one is it's a great way to set up whiffs. Whether it's turning around like that or it's going like that. And of course, back turn down four is 10 frames. So that right there is a uh, frame trap, right? He unfortunately doesn't have the back turn eight frame jab. He does have the 12 frame back turn, right? His back turn one, which is only negative one on block, but on hit, he can link a shoulder, right? So, bah, right? And then, uh, shoulder. So that isn't a frame trap for jabs, but it would exchange on, uh, on, at, uh, on, uh, Ele uh, 11 frame moves and then it'll be 12 frame moves now on the, in an exchange situation I don't know what would happen with his back turn um, with his back turn one I don't know what happens there what's 11 frames that knocks down uh, doesn't have any other 11 frame moves right? only the four which would knock down all right no biggie. So yeah, you're basically uh, your frame trap from side step two is gonna be uh, on block is gonna be down four. That's your actual frame trap. Uh, as far as side step two on block into or even on hit into the sweep, I'm guessing back dash is gonna fuck that up. Yep, it sure does. See, once I saw the pushback on hit, you you could tell that's what's gonna happen. Which is also going to happen on block. So, if you go to get Feng and you're afraid of back turn, remember, in most instances, back turn is going to fuck up, fucking eliminate that being a threat. Once you eliminate the main low being a threat, you essentially don't ever have to duck. Unless it's like a round ending situation, right? That's only really scary if you tech and he's back turned. That's when that sweep becomes truly scary. It's kind of like Eddie's, uh, or if he goes in a neutral situation in your face, right? Like that, right? That's when that kind of shit's scary. That's why Eddie, the good Kappa players, they won't go into the transitions, even if it's plus, and try to force the launcher mix up as much. Unless they know that you don't know the matchup. Because you could always, uh, depending on your character, most characters could always back dash away from the low launcher. In almost all plus on block, um, fucking uh, relax stance situations, you could back dash away from the low so it doesn't trip you for the launch. Same thing is going on here with Feng. So like they'll go and you know they'll make you tech into it or they'll go right into your face in a neutral situation when they think you're scared and then they'll go back turn or relax stance and do the fucking mix up. Same concept here. Um, yeah, so side step one is just a pretty good move in general because the frames are good on block, on hit, uh, and on hit, and it's homing. So I think it's a good, it's a solid move. And you know, and it's pretty fast, 15 frames. You know, you can hold forward, fastest way to turn around the block. Hold back, create a little bit of space. You hold down back, create even more space. Just be careful if you hold down back. Let me see, even that plus one, let's see. See? Can't block. Alright, that you can't because it's so slow. But like fast, a fast approaching mids, you're not gonna be able to block them. So that's the trade-off of like, you know, sure you create the most space holding down back, and that's a popular way to turn around from back turn. But there is a period where you are 100% vulnerable to a long range mids, fast long range mids. If you were like negative five, six, then the forward three might catch him. But at plus one, it won't. It's too slow. Uh, I don't say something about size two. When people go to punish this with highs, you will crush them with back turn down three because of how quickly it gets down. Of course, of course. If they if they approach you after this, down three is going to become a threat. I'm, I'm giving advice uh, to you if you're going... Remember, I give advice as anti-character advice, not only for the character. Uh, backdash completely blows that shit up. And honestly, if I were to get hit or to block this, I wouldn't challenge Feng. <laughs> you know, I probably would not challenge Feng. Why well, challenge him? Right? Look at the spacing. Why would you challenge him with any buttons in this situation? Don't. Just don't risk it. Don't fucking risk it. If anything, backdash it and sidestep. Yeah. 
Don't try, don't try to challenge Feng in that situation. Unless you're gonna do like. I was thinking, I was, uh, unless you're gonna do a fast moving armor move. No, no, don't. Then, then you're gonna get hit by the low. No, don't fucking do it. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. You're gonna get pissed at yourself. Even though, even if more often than not you guess right and you fuck them up in the back. You're gonna get like every once in a while. You're gonna just eat the fucking low sweep. You're gonna eat some stupid shit, and then you're gonna get pissed at yourself, and you'll be like, "What the fuck?" You know. Just don't put yourself in that situation. Don't challenge it. All right. So um, next we got sidestep three. Never gonna give you up. Uh, sidestep three has a follow up. Sidestep three two. And of course, if uh, you can uh, recover back turn, if you hold back off of side step three, you don't have to input the two. You can just hold back here. All right, so there's a lot going on here. Side step three by itself, 18 frame startup. Uh, it is a high, two active frames, negative two on hits, uh, negative 11 on block, but there's a lot of range. Let me see what happens. Yeah, that spacing looks... Oh, negative 13 says second bot. Uh oh, I was reading the wrong thing. All right, so if you go to back turn, it's negative 11, which means you're going to eat back turn 11 frames well, if it reaches, um, which it probably won't. So Feng will be able to punish this pretty well, but some characters will have some trouble punishing this. So I'm actually getting the second. Oh, wow, what the fuck? The fuck? Oh, I see what's going on. The spacing is making it so the second active frame of the shoulder is what he's blocking. So he can't. Yeah, it's it's 14 frames. That's basically the limitations of his shoulder. It's inconsistent if it's spaced out. Good old Tekken bot, man. You get a work in Tekken bot, you can see this kind of things, man. The after shoulder. <laughs> Does uh, back turn down three have to counter hit? No, it doesn't. It needs a clean hit. Yeah, exactly. It needs a clean hit. So uh, the follow up is a natural combo, knocks down. So if you're near the wall with that sort of knockdown, you probably get something guaranteed. Maybe nothing amazing because you recover back turn. You might just get like a sweep or just a down four. Or he has a back turn um, stomp, doesn't he? Yeah, that. He might get that near the wall. Back turn three. Which is similar to 4 4 3. It might even be the same move. Alright, so sidestep three, two. Um, yeah, and then the, the mid is negative 11, and I'm assuming you're probably going to be right in his face, right? Right in your face? Yeah, so, okay. Negative 5, huh. Sorry, negative 11 is for the back turn recovery on the side step 3 cancel. Keep fucking that up. So, this is where it starts to get weird. Uh, I don't know if Feng has a back turn counter. Negative 5 means, I think you guarantee to eat a fast mid here, I think. Let's see. So I'm holding forward to turn around the block, just to show you guys. Alright, see? 14 frames. 12 frames, okay, so it's safe. He's safe. If you hold forward, he's safe. If you hold back, he's gonna get hit. Probably. By jabs. See? Wow, fish hook misses? Crazy. Oh, wow. Crazy. But jabs are gonna hit him. Of course, you could duck that. It just, you won't be able to turn and stand block the jabs. But you could duck it, obviously. So, um.
I would go with a fast mid. Just go with a fast mid when you block this. Let me see something. Let me get that faster. I don't like that because then you're gonna eat a back turn hop kick. This is a weird ass situation. At least for Feck. Mainly because Fish Hook is whiffing. If Fish Hook didn't whiff there. How weird that putting himself at negative five up close back turn is better for him to force a very high risk mix up than putting himself at plus one <laughs> because it's pushed out, it's, it's facing, you know? Who'd have thunk it, right? I'm guessing, by the way, that side step two, the plus one, uh, at the wall probably won't create that much space, so it's probably gonna be way scarier at the wall. Just a guess. So, side step two is probably a very scary tool at the wall. Now, this is still in your favor if you block this. Oh, exchange with 10 frames, huh? Alright. So, to stop this, you could hit him to punish him, right? Well, you can still backdash the low sweep, so. You can still backdash the low sweep, so it's not that big a deal. Right? Yeah, see? No big deal. As long as you can take away the threatening sweep, he can't force the scary mix-up on you. And that's really all to me. That's what's important. As long as he can't force some dumbass coin toss bullshit that could really fuck you up for guessing wrong, then, uh, you know, it's not so bad. But the point being, uh, point being, if he holds back, he creates enough space that you, at least for Feng, fast mids are gonna whiff, right? Um, and he could still block the shoulder, right? The long range, 13 frame, 14 frame poly in that situation. Um, if he holds forward, then you, you'll have to block the mids and he'll block the jabs. But then, because you for, you know, if you want to punish, punish him holding back. With, uh, because that would require jabs, if he holds down back in that situation, he can launch you. Or if he goes into the sweep, he can launch you. So that's, that's quite obnoxious. Oh, that's true. Right. What is the Brian guy? I don't know. Soon, I guess. Um, I mean, you don't need a fucking Brian guy. This motherfucker, this Keanu Reeves guy, all he does is go online and taunt Jetta for people. And he's like, "What's the Brian guy? Fuck out of here, son! What do you, what do you not know about Brian?" I mean, I'm sure there's a lot, but you, you got taunt Jetta for you don't need more. <laughs> what else do you fucking need? Um, yeah, so it's a weird situation, but. It's still very much in your favor so long as you block the side step three two. It's still in your favor overall, and you don't have to like really gust the mix up. Just eat the nine damage on the down three, or the down four, whatever the damage is, and just don't risk ducking. Because if you risk ducking, that's when you start really you really start eating shit basically. Uh, all right, so that's side step three two. Um, as far as stepping it, you know, stepping in the opposite direction, they sidestep or delay your step. I have to record this. Yeah, 
See, as long as you delay. If you don't delay, you're gonna have to block it. You know? and of course, you could still duck it. So. <sighs> All right, next we got sidestep four, the classic. You guys don't know how fucked up this move was in 5.0. Sidestep four, just like back turn three, needs a clean hit. You see the clean hit in blue text? That's when you fall down. It's not up close, it's not a clean hit. That's what happens. And then he's negative one, which is not a big deal, but whatever. But then it turns into a negative one on hit, 14 damage, poke. That's like negative 30 on block. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, it is not seeable. It's a 20 frame startup. But what makes it like, what makes people anticipate it is the sidestep, obviously. You can mask the sidestep a little bit, but you kind of want them to see the sidestep because that's what gives you mix up options. So the juggle uh, is it just right into that, no matter which way you go. Yeah, so you get the usual, right? Yep, you get the usual, right? Which, uh, if they get hit, you get a free fish hook. So long as you time it right. So, and then on block, it's plus four. So, size of four is very good. Let's see how it tracks. Look at this. Because the sidestepping is fucking with the spacing. If you sidestep in the opposite direction. A sidewalk, rather. Oh, wow. It's, it's finicky. It's finicky, but that might happen. In general, if you're afraid of this, you want to backdash. That's the key to getting away from sidestep whatever is a mix-up. He has to get you to stand still to truly mix you up with that. Which is why it's extra effective at the wall, obviously. Um, obviously, also, it's effective in a tech situation. If he sidesteps with you when he tech, you gotta guess, right? So, that's the whole deal with that. Negative 31 on block. <laughs> he didn't even move back, and as you just saw, it didn't trip him. If you're off axis, it might not trip. Oh, well. In 5.0... Blocking it didn't cause that stun to happen. Right? In 5.0, that didn't happen. What would happen in 5.0 is he would just keep sweeping, kind of like Leo's full crowd sweep in Tag 2, and it was not launch punishable. It still gave him a jungle. Some characters, I think, could launch punish. I forget how the frames worked out exactly, but essentially, this shit was, like, <laughs> not risky. Like, <laughs> compared to, like, now, you know? It was, like, not even that risky. This was... It was fucked up. It was fucked up. And it was why people, a lot of people consider him, at least early on, Feg to be like top four. Like the big four in 5.0, when I started like playing at least, the big four was, um, number one was Steve, unequivocally. One of the most broken characters in, in all, one of those most broken non-banned characters in a competitive fighting game ever, if not the most broken, was Steve in 5.0, right? Because he had a bunch of ways to kill you with the one juggle. Right? Sometimes with wall, sometimes without. Uh, he would have this basically sidestep punch punch that would cause you like a stun. And he would go into the Dempsey roll and then he would cancel the Dempsey roll. But it would stun you like his fucking, like his high crushing straight punch, straight right punch, whatever the fuck that shit's called, destabilizer, whatever it's called. Where you get hit, you go, uh, and your arms would flap down. That stun, but it pushes you back. He would get that stun. And he would go into Dempsey row, and then he would cancel the Dempsey row, and then he would launch you. As, like, that was his launcher. Just the two punches, Dempsey row cancel, and then the actual down forward 2-2, two -two, which launched on normal hit, or some stupid shit like that. And then, so you already lost, like, half-life, and then now you're in the air, and now the jungle starts. And he would just fucking kill you. So 5.0 Steve was, was fucked up, right? And then there was, like, Nina, because of the stupid-ass up forward 1, or whatever, and all that shit. Uh... Uh, and then it was Brian because of the fucking one two one wall combo. It's a down forward three. You you had to eat the down forward three if you teched. It would hit you. You couldn't crouch block for whatever reason when you teched. And all sorts of fucked up shit. And then it was Feng. And it was because of because of that side step four. Now the 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 tears probably changed towards the end of 5.0's life. I don't know. 
I ain't know enough to really comment on that. But yeah, that was the Feng shit in 5.0. Okay, you know, a little history lesson for you people there. Uh, I'm sure there was more than just this, but this was the big one that I always heard about. Still, very good move. You know, it has some glaring weaknesses, but that it's not a bad move. It's still a strong mix-up tool as long as you use it correctly. Just know that in a neutral situation, you can always backdash to fuck up the clean hit. Just like Paul's Demolition Man, just like Noctis' Demolition Man, just like a lot of these dumbass sweeps. <clears throat> always, you could always backdash to fuck up the clean hit. Unless you're Gigas. And then you're an idiot for picking Gigas. Like me. Anyway, um... So that's side step four. Then it's side step one plus two. This is the baby's easy mode built-in mix-up for side step four. This side step one plus two got buffed in this game, right? Plus one on block, pushes back a little bit, and it knocks back on normal hit. So at the wall, this is totally a, a mix-up tool you can do. But do you want more reward <laughs> for your safe on block mid? Side step is a down four three. That's what. That's the actual true strong mix-up. Just know that you're going to be off axis, so you have to account for that in whatever the jungle is you're going to do if you land a side step down forward three. But that's really what you want to do in general. Even at the wall, you could do one two shoulder off of that, or you could do side step and at one four shoulder at the wall as your wall combo, right? But you could also do side step one plus two. That's still, you know, that's still doable, but this is uh, significantly slower than side step down forward three. Now, side step down forward three is two frames faster. Then side step four. Side step one plus two is two frames slower than side step four. So in regards to fucking with people's fuzzy guard timing, that's worth considering, right? If the mid comes out faster than the low, that's a harder thing to fuzzy than when the mid comes out slower than the low. When the mid comes out slower than the low in the mix-up, it's a lot easier to fuzzy it. Otherwise, you ha it's not really a fuzzy. You have to delay your duck. When it's the other way around, right? So that's like you know, that's what makes the you know the mid coming out faster than uh, than the low makes it harder, and that's another thing that makes this better as a mix-up tool. Something that many people don't think about when when it comes to this stuff. <clears throat> down four three two down back one four four three four shoulder. Yeah, yeah, that's the jungle. I mean, I don't know if that works off axis, but. That's why I just brought up off axis because you're going to be hitting off axis because it's sidestep. High chance you're going to be hitting off axis. Right? That's Right? You know, yeah, see? Shoulders, shoulder might whip sometimes because of off axis. So I don't know what, what a more consistent juggle would be. Uh, but whatever it is, you Feng players got to learn that shit. I'm not a Feng player. <laughs> Although I might fuck with him for a bit. Off axis combos two, down forward one, down back one four, dash forward three four. Okay, do you get the good Okio for that? Plus four, looks like you do. Oh, thank you for that. You got the good Okio. Remember, anytime you see that, if that connects, so long as you time it right, free fish hook on hit. Free. You got the late, the late frames of that to hit. Okay, so that's pretty much size one plus two. Plus one on block, knock down on normal hit, counter hit. I don't think it's any different. Yeah, it's the same thing. All right, now we get to talk about the Chinese getup. I think I think this might be called the Chinese getup because him and the Changs do it, and they're Chinese. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the lore here. I'm ignorant. Lei probably did it too. As a matter of fact, he did do it. Maybe that is why they call it Chinese getup. Uh, but I'll show you what Chinese getup is right now. It's unique to Chinese characters, I guess. Um, all right. This is Chinese getup. Very, very obnoxious way to get up. Um, Pulling it down, down there, but yeah. So three plus four, right? It's not a spring pick kick for Feng. I don't know if he has a regular spring kick at all, to be honest with you. Uh, let me try some d different button combinations here. Nope. He has Chinese getup. So if there is a weakness to it, it's that there's like no range. 
but it is incredibly hard to whiff punish this. Like, it's fucking weird. It's weird. It's hard to explain. You can whiff punish it, but it is so fucking hard. Like, you miss time it, you stick out a button too early, it fucking hits you, it clips you, orbital style, right? Neutral jump orbital style with Brian, and then he fucking gets a juggle if it hits you, right? It's, I had to, to make him run into me. Let me record him moving forward. I don't know what the pickup is in this game. Anybody know? No. Oh, wow. Does he get a joke in this game? He still does, right? I'm not crazy, right? What's the pickup? Oh, hey, there it is. All right, it's a little finicky. Oh, you gotta lead your jab. You gotta hold forward. Otherwise, it's inconsistent. Got it. Thank you. Lead your jab. It always adds range. Doesn't add any frames. Yeah, so, whatever. So, it's essentially like... It fucks up Oki so often. So often. To the point where some people just give up their Oki. Right? Because think about it. You go for something like a forward, forward, three for Feng. It's so slow. This shit will just... You know, this shit will just beat you out, and then he'll get a fucking... It's, it's really annoying. It's really fucked up. Very, very, very fucked up. So it's good. That's what I'm saying. Um, I don't know how I can record him doing it. I don't know how to, like... Can you, is there a way to record him doing it so I could try to test the punish? Um, how do I... He can't put himself on the floor, right? I don't... I can't think of any way to... What does he have? I don't think he has anything to put him on the floor, right? He has the, sh the big ass kick from Kempo, but he gets up automatically. Uh, well, if I put him the spring kick, will he do his shit? All right. Easier. Oh, but it's safe on block, by the way. Or if it's yeah, negative four on. <laughs> Why is it safe on block? Let's see what RB Norway says about it. Negative five to negative two on block. Yeah, so it's always safe on block, essentially. So you have to get it to whip. That's the big weakness of this. So you have to space yourself and get ready to like blow him up for doing it. Okay, see, I was too slow there. And this is a slow move. Right? And if I do it too early, okay, so do it like a... If you're gonna prepare yourself to... That's what I was looking for to have happen. Of course, it'll happen on Feng's fucking hop kick because it has such shit range. My recommendation is, whoever you are, if you're going against Feng, you... It, to punish this move, you gotta get your faster, your fast launcher locked and loaded. Don't get greedy, and space yourself out just a little bit. And then you're gonna punish this move. For fuck's sake, time it right. You know, maybe if you don't have a fast launcher, if you're Bob, do Cracker Jacker. Up forward, one plus two, one plus two. Just get something for this, because it's very annoying, and shitty things love getting up like this every fucking time. Every time. You gotta punish that shit. You have to punish that shit. It's very annoying. It loses to lows sometimes, right? Dragonov's down two connects now because it's spaced out, but from experience in tag two, he would make Dragonov eat shit using that shit very often. If I was not right up against Feng's fucking ball sack, that shit would devour. Down two whiff, and then he kicks you right upside your dumb ass head because you're Dragonov, right? 
it's it's very obnoxious. In this game, Dragunov's down two range got buffed for God knows what reason. It didn't need it, but it got buffed, and it's pretty consistent, right? So yeah, lows will will will, will catch it, right? Yeah, I missed. I bet you do. <laughs> uh, lows, low. It, that is a general weakness. Yes, lows. But fuck that. Don't risk it. <laughs> Unless you get a situation where you know you're gonna beat it out clean, you gotta test your Oki on that kind of shit specifically, right? It's different, right? Not everybody has that. Spring Kicks beat some shit too, but it doesn't work like that. Spring Kicks don't get juggles like that. They get juggles in some awkward situations, but they used to get juggles more consistently, actually, I think, in, in uh, 7.0 or like 7.1 or whatever one of those patches. But uh, not anymore. Now they just kind of knock you back, and for the most part, that's it. This gets him a juggle, so... You have to like, you have to test your Oki for Feng specifically, no matter which character you are. You have to test your standard Oki against that getup specifically. Against that getup specifically. It's not a normal spring kick. It's like the hit, his hurt box is different than a standard spring kick. It's very annoying. Alright, so, that's that. Next, uh, it's talking about his stomp. So, according to RB Norway, his stomp, if it gets blocked, it's only negative 13, which is nice. Most of the cats cannot launch him. But, unfortunately, it's negative 2 on hit, so you cannot make it plus on hit. So, that's how his stomp works. It only works on grounded, it's down plus 3 plus 4. Uh, you know, that. So, if, they, if that gets blocked, more than likely, more often than not, it's gonna get, you know, whiffed like that, I guess, if they attack. But if it gets blocked, it's only negative 13. Next, 1 plus 3 plus 4. Is that, uh... Uh, taunt. 1 plus 3 plus 4 is a taunt. Okay. Uh... Oh, that. <laughs> I don't know if this does anything other than being a taunt. I don't... I don't know. Any of you fan players know if there's anything special about this? Like some Jin Omen stand shit? I don't think, ah, fucking hit my elbow. Well, whatever. Next is... Shifting Clouds. Alright. 4 plus 3 plus 4. We talked about this last time. Shifting Clouds. He does the Wing Chun shit. He absorbs up to 2 hits. If he absorbs 2 hits, he automatically does an attack. If he only absorbs one hit, he keeps moving forward while still doing shifting clouds. You can also do down back one and hold forward, and he goes to the shifting clouds. And then if you hold back during shifting clouds, he does a Kempo step. Well, or it's just a Kempo stance, not a step. This is back, uh, this is back Kempo step, but if you hold back, he does that little extra huh, pause, uh, pose in the end. And that gives you the same moves as the back Kempo step, right? So... Shifting Clouds has a couple of options. Uh, Shifting Clouds 1 is a juggle starting mid. 20 frame startup, negative 14 on block. Gets that cool looking knockdown. I think you have to pick up with uh, 1 plus 4, right? Or is it? That's not going to work. Yeah, see? I was slow, but... And you're going to be at a weird angle here. Oof, very weird angle here. Uh, you convert with dash forward. Oh boy, that seems tough. Are you kidding me? Oh man, that's not easy to do. Black Omen, oh! For a high, that fucking forward one pursuit has a great hitbox to be able to hit like that at all. Oh, there it is. So you can do that, but that is not easy. Um, what's the easy mode combo? It would be dash one plus four, which is not particularly easy either, but easier than that. Right? Damn. 
Oops. So this is not an easy conversion to do at all. You have to dash deep enough. Otherwise, it's going to whiff. But if you dash too deep, it's not going to pick up. Alright. You can probably make that work. Dash down forward. back one four then wasn't I just trying that oh I was trying to jab first okay so if you don't do the jab you can get that all right and that'll give you the okie very low damage though um all right well that's one shifting clouds two Okay, that's that mid launcher, that very fast one. This is 15 frames. So the thing about shifting clouds, even off of this, is it's not about when you use shifting clouds. It's never about frame data. Shifting clouds is about the, stopping people from wanting to attack, and then you force the stance mix up because of the parry, right? That's what shifting clouds is actually about. It's kind of gimmicky, but semi gimmicky, but it's not useless. Uh, so this too is uh, negative 13 on block. Launches on normal hits. Okay, you get the usual. Okay, that's shifting clouds two. Shifting clouds three is the high that is super plus on block. Doesn't look like it has a lot of range. So that's plus eight on block. Uh, you automatically step back, so the spacing is weird. But it's still, you can still jab, so that's good. Um, knocks down, so you get the free follow-up. Okay, doesn't matter if it's on normal counter. A lot of damage, too. Free stomp. 20 frames on the high. All right. So next you got shifting clouds four, and that's the low for the mix-up. Plus two on hit, spaced out pretty well. So you don't wanna you wanna be careful when you if you force the plus frames. You're spaced out like this, uh, a lot of stuff could be backdashed. Like even that probably look at that. You're already out of range for fish, like that tells me all I need to know. You know? Plus two, just take the spacing. Don't like force it too much. Um All right, negative 14 on the low, yikes. But on counter hit. Ooh, is there a pickup? That's the kind of knockdown you might be able to pick up off. Man, he's too far. All right, so dash stop for four, four, three. Got it. Maybe near the wall he gets uh, better stuff. Because it pushes out too far. That's the problem. If he were closer, he'd definitely be able to pick up with this. So forward, forward, three, or stop. Got it. 43 damage. 44 damage. Clouds, one plus two. Oh, he has the string. One plus two, one. One plus two, one, two. Ah, oh, it's not an extra combo. So it's a counter hit string and knocks down right in front of him. And that kind of knockdown, I think, means he doesn't wall splat with it. Mid high high, negative 11 on the second and third hit. Second hit is zero. 
on hit. First hit is the mid is uh, 15 frame startup, negative nine on block, plus two on hit. Ah, uh, this seems kind of useless. I mean, I guess, is that like his safe mid option? I guess that would be his safe mid option. but it jails. And he could delay the last hit, but the last hit does not jail. Yeah, he could delay the last hit quite a bit. Uh, the last hit of this... Uh, what kind of knockdown is it? I might get a free follow up after that. Oh no, Sub Zero, it is not. I found this out last time. Yeah, I don't think Shifting Cloud 1 plus 2 is any good, but I'm still looking for it. I'm still looking through this stuff. That's what I do, guys. Every move. Every move. Remember, I'm here to help newer players too. Before now, people's for probably too slow. If you get anything free off of it, it'll be a stomp. The only uh, the only use for this move I say is like if you want to go for a mid that's not super bad on block. Well, it's not even super bad. Negative 14, negative 13. For some reason, you could do the first two hits. One plus two, one of this. It is a natural combo. It is zero on hit, so it's not very good. But at the very least, it's negative 11 and cannot be ducked. Or the first hit by itself is uh, negative nine. 15 frame startup, so it is back. Oh, look at this pushback, wait. Oh, most people will not be able to punish this. Bang shoulder will punish it because it's negative 14. But the one, that's good. I wonder why he gets a weak juggle off of it. Look at the pushback. A lot of punishes were with here. So that's a matchup dependent thing. This, on the other hand, has no pushback. Okay, so it tracks the way it looks like it should. step now not walk oh wow Ooh. okay so you can walk around This seems to absolutely track to his left side. It's another use for it, I suppose. If you're definitely gonna swing out of this stupid stance. Oh, 
Oh boy. Okay, so it, it tracks that pretty well, but not walk. And uh, to his left side, because it's got a weird chunky hitbox, I guess. But it is a high. And it's a little on the slow side. The low comes out at uh, 20 frames, so the same speed as the one, the mid launcher that pushes back on block. But the tracking on both is like suspect. So this, this is weird. Sidestep could fuck the stance up and sidewalk. Fuck the stance up pretty well if you time it right. You probably want to sidewalk left also. I guess the stance. If you sidewalk too much, you're gonna walk into the hitbox of this thing. <laughs> Alright. And that's shifting clouds. Alright. Oh yeah, of course. Shifting clouds one that kind of pushback. This, you're not gonna get that pushback at the wall, obviously. That's a that's a given. But I'll say it out loud just in case people don't know. When you see pushback on block more often than not, you don't you don't get that sort of pushback at the wall. All right, back Kenpo step. Right, and the moves out of this. This is obviously uh, the thing about this shit is it creates an extra back dash. You know, and uh, when people miss something, as long as you time this well, you can make a lot of shit with. Like, uh, famously, me using it against JDCR to make the wild running two, the dragon of wild running two whip. He was just standing back here, he went for a wild running two, and then perfectly timed, nope. And then he got the launch on him, right? He said, bah. Um, it makes a lot of shit whip, obviously. He steps back, it's good. The moves he gets out of it, like I said, if you hold back during shifting clouds, because that extra little pose in the end, you're going to get the same moves out of it. So, the moves, let's look at him right now. Um, oh yeah, and if you hold forward during it, you go into shifting clouds, by the way. So you back push people's foot forward, goes to shifting clouds. And then you can do back push people's foot forward and then hold back to go right back into Kenpo. And then you go right back into Kenpo. <laughs> so, just a little extra layer of weirdness. Alright, so, back Kenpo step one. Got the low. It is an elbow. I'm pretty sure, so I don't think you can low parry this. Nope, I'm wrong. It's a punch, I guess. It's a, it's a backhand, I guess, to the fucking legs. Even though it looks like it's an elbow. <laughs> so you can low parry it. But it is plus eight on hit, and he's right in your face. Very good. And he recovers. Crouching, not as good then. Still, good. Um, I mean, that kind of... That kind of sets this up to be... A pretty... Okay, he doesn't knock down, so if they jab... Well, no, but they, they, they recover crouching. That sets up forward up one up really well. This? That sets that up really well. Very well. And then he does have... A full crouch low, right? Oops. He has a full crouch low. That's 21 frames. So it'll lose out to uh, my math. Thir 13 frames will exchange, uh, something like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it'll still beat out slower while standing options. Uh, and then of course you can still instantly sidestep out of this, only in one direction. But you can't do that. Hey, didn't I... Is it this meal did I not do while standing 1 plus 2? I don't remember seeing while standing 1 plus 2 in this movement. Let's go through that right now. While standing 1 plus 2 is a parry move. It's slow, but it's a parry move. Let's see if that's a good frame. Man, I can't find the frame. The frame range he's on. 
I, I'm trying punches. I don't know the um, when it. know yeah the, the there's a frame range I don't know what the fuck? how was this not on the list did I just miss it cuz RB Nori will, will tell you oh I did miss it it's on the list yeah so it's a higher mid punch parry according to RB Norway frame three frames three through eight frames three through eight so he has to be like he has to put himself at a very negative, uh... That should do it. There we go. And it's just like the armor move. He's plus 30. See? Just like the armor move. If you're near the wall, free forward three, four. So what do you know? His generic down three sets it up quite well. Negative ten, but it pushes back. Got it. Alright, cool. Ouch, I hit my elbow again. Um let me change the music here. That shoulder is easier. Yeah, but if you're near the wall, I'm saying you got the uh whatever. Cause you don't have to dash, that's the point. Uh, let's see, what are my playlists here? Okay. So yeah, got that out of the way. Negative 10. It's a slow move, but it's about the parry. So it's not one that you use for punishment or anything like that. It's just something to use to stop people from swinging. The window is a little tight, I guess, but, you know. Even when he puts himself at negative, it's a way to stop people from swinging at you when you're coming up from crouching. <clears throat> Alright, let me go back down to where I was. Kenpo. So the Kenpo low is quite good. Kenpo one. And then on counter hit, he knocks you down. And I'm guessing it's the same situation as the other low. Oh, he's closer. Oh, he's crouching. Shit. Aw. Uh -huh. How did I get the down four? I did that by accident. Oh, okay. Uh, so go for a stomp. I did it while running three by accident. Four, four, three is what I meant to do. Yeah, so we did four. Wow, that's a nice chunk of damage. The way it hit him there. 24, huh? Four, four, three, or uh, stomp. Dash up stomp. Good against bears. You get four, three, four in open ground. Good shit. Anti bear tech. Good shit. Coviello the scrub. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so if you get this parry, you could get a forward three four on bears. You still have to dash, right? Yeah. Uh, you can also do dash down back one four in open ground. Really interesting. Interesting shit. Oof. Yeah, any tech to fuck bears up. Lord knows there's only like five bears players out there. Those poor souls need to be put down. Taken out of their misery. Especially Ollie. <laughs> I like Ollie. Ollie needs to scream. I'm like president of the, of the Ollie fan club. <laughs> I keep joking about that shit in the Discord. People are like, come on, man. <laughs> 
Because they get so angry when they perceive people that stream sniping Aris. I don't know why, but they get so fucking mad in there. I'm like, man, who gives a shit? Right? It's like, oh, I don't want to watch Young P all day. It's like, all right, so you'll watch somebody else all day that's going to stream snipe him. And they're going to be a shitty player. At least Young P's an okay player. I guess he's good at this point, but I'm not, like, he's not great. But, um, mind you, I'm talking to shit. I'm awful, all right? From my standards, I'm awful. But Young P's all right. He's getting better. Uh, but, you know, people, like, they're bitching and they're going to see, oh, I don't want to see him fight Young P all day. Then you're going to see him fight the other, like, five people he's going to fight all day because he sets it to five only. Connection. Right? And even then, he doesn't play online anymore anyway because fucking Old Master 3, whatever the fuck his name is, had to be a dumbass and keep testing him. So now he's never going to stream that shit online again. <clears throat> Alright, so back to the, uh... Back to the good shit here, right? So Ken for one is uh, good low. I wish he didn't recover crouching, but hey. Counter hit properties, plus eight force crouch. Negative 13 on block. You could still low parry it. Even though it looks like an elbow. Now we got Kenpo 2. Alright, Kenpo 2 is the knockdown one. I think he gets a free follow up, right? He can't hold back here. Correct, he gets a free shoulder then, or maybe even better. Alright, so let's go through the motions here. Does he float? No, he doesn't float. Okay. So he gets basically a free shoulder. Yep, gets a shoulder, exactly. You still have to dash for it, though. Like, back one. 44 damage, just like counter hit back one. Um, I'll be honest, that was funny as fuck. Own Master played him straight for months, and <laughs> it's funny because Own Master used to be on his shit list. He avoided him in the earlier days, and then all of a sudden it was like, nah, you're cool. And then he's like, all right, this time I'm going to be a bitch. <laughs> uh, you tap forward a little. I, I, just, I always just dash because uh, this is just me. I have that, for that kind of thing, I have a habit of dashing because you're going to cancel the dash anyway because naturally it's a back input for the shoulder. Uh, I'm sure you can just hold forward too, right? You don't have to dash. Right? You also delay it a bit, so when the legs are falling, you're going to get the shoulder on the legs. But just me, naturally, it feels better to me to just dash and do it. But whatever, whatever, whoever you are, whatever Feng, you know, if you're playing Feng, do it your, whatever makes you feel comfortable, just don't drop it. Do it your way. Um, yeah, so that's a solid move. Negative nine on block, so it's safe. Uh, is it pushed back? A little bit, but not enough for, not enough to really negate that negative nine. You pretty much just back dash or guess mid low. Um, and of course you can duck it because it's a high. It is 14 frames though, so it's fast. Alright, so Kenpo 3 is next. And that's the launcher. This is basically your, if you do the back Kenpo step and you make anything with anything, at least anything that's like on the uh, slow side, because this is, uh, what is it, 22 frames. Uh, anything fast like that recovers relatively fast that whips and you and you're able to recognize the difference if you're able to recognize the difference That's when you use this instead the two if you're not able to recognize the difference then If you want to play it safe go with the two as you whip punish unless they recover crouching you got to know these things <laughs> uh, Stuff like a dragon while running two even though it's plus on block if you make him with it He's just a gigantic like running like a jackass with his arm out open all day to get whiff punished, right? So that's going to be good for that. Uh, this is negative 12 on block, like most hop kicks that come out of stances. It crushes on frame 15, so not very reliable in regards to the low crush. Uh, but yeah, you get the standard. What do you get? Um, you get the standard. Yep, the gold standard. Oh, wow, I didn't get the plus four there. Oh, yeah, I have him recovering back instead of teching. That situation where I'm getting plus four or the free fish hook, that's only against tech. If they hold back, you're not going to get the, the super late frames. You will get better frame data than usual, but it's going to be in the middle of the active frames. Like in that instance, I got four active frame number four out of ten. So it's negative one instead of negative five or four, whatever the fuck it is at worst. So keep that in mind. Oh, hey, what, what was that? Whatever that was. Oh, thanks for the uh, host, Grim. Um, 
So keep that in mind. Right. Me actually hop kick with. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Go figure. I didn't know that. I just assumed that it was. He just did a regular ass hop kick, huh? But hey, you know what? You have one built into the Kenpo step also, so whatever. Just know that that's there. What's the damage difference? Oh, well, you know, it's actually less damage. <laughs> Same juggle, but less damage if you use the regular hop kick. Not to mention, if you fuck up, this one is safer, one frame, but slower. But then again, if you wait for the Kepo set to recover, wouldn't that kind of make it the same? Well, whatever. The point is, Nii got the whiff punish. Alright, so then we got Kepo 4. Oops. Kepo 4. That's this shit. And he can do Chinese getup out of that, right? Yeah. So he it ha that, that has Chinese getup built into it. If you just mash 3 plus 4. Like, it has it like a string, right? Uh, the first kick by itself is negative 7. Knocks down. Uh, I don't know if anything's guaranteed. Nah, it doesn't look like it is. Yeah, no. Nothing's guaranteed. Uh, that definitely hits grounded. I think if you hit somebody out of the air, I think that uh, will spike them down, right? I don't know how to test that. Okay, that might floor break, but it doesn't do the spike that I thought it did. I don't really know if this move is all that good. I, I, I know it's something that fake players sometimes just randomly throw out, but when I say fake players, I'm talking about just random jabronis or into online. I don't think this is used very much in, in high-level play, and it's probably because if you make this shit whiff, he gets fucked up, right? Go, he'll at least eat like a grounded hitting move. Oh, wow, he does do the kicker pretty quick. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. So you, if you get if you get whiff punish that, you gotta do it pretty quick. Right? Oh, you could float that, but if you if you're a little off in your timing, that's what happens. Or if you're a little off axis and it whiffs. So just hit him with some grounded poke, grounded hitting thing of some sort. Right. Potential surprise round then there. Yeah, it's more or less a wheel kick. Yeah, like a Brian back back four three whatever it is, right? That's true. What's going on, DDR muchacho? DDR muchacho. Funny name. Then we used to have like a guy that I think at one point was known as the best DDR player in the country, or like just a really well known one. Apparently, he was on the news. Uh, he was playing Tekken when I was playing Tekken in the arcade. Uh, he, he was a cool dude. His name was Sketch. I think he spelled it with like a number three or some sort of thing like that. And when I stopped going to Chinatown Fair during the Tekken Six days, because I didn't like it enough to pay a dollar to lose, um, we went from Tekken, Tekken DR 5.0 to machines, 50 cents each. Later, in D late DR days, 25 cents a game. We went from that to one machine, Tekken Six, a dollar a game, right? And not only that, it felt laggy. Right, and Henry sw Henry Sen swore, swore he would like bitch nonstop about us bitching about lack <laughs> that, and he would be like, oh, because Street Fighter Four had a ton of support because no shit, it's Street Fighter fucking Four, right? Uh, especially at that time, Tekken was dominating the arcades, maybe not as much in America, but worldwide. Like when that big ass gap after Third Strike for Street Fighter and Alpha Three and shit, that was like Tekken's heyday, right? Tekken 5 and DR especially was like, as far as money generated in arcades, it was like number one by a fucking country mile uh, above everything else. And then Street Fighter 4 was the big ass return to form and all those old 2D heads came by and shit. So he had a ton of support for Street Fighter, obviously. And 
for Tekken 6, we all of a sudden got no support, pretty much. And I just didn't like Tekken 6 enough to fucking play it. So, uh, why did I bring all that up again? I kind of lost track of why I brought that up. Oh, yeah. So, Sketch. So, Sketch was, uh, he was a cool dude at the time. Like, I wasn't going, but he was interviewing our local players and running a YouTube channel. I think he called it Tekken Tracks or something like that. And he was trying to get something started, something going. Oh, shit, another hoster. Thanks, Liver, Liver, Liver Slapper. He was trying to get something going with that, but I guess he just fell through, you know? I wonder how that guy's doing now. He was always a nice guy, though, when I was when I ran into the arcades. He was, I, think he, I think he was a Paul player, and he was a filthy Roger player. Two fucking Roger players. You can't trust Roger players. The clam. <laughs> the clam. All right, uh, so back Kempel step for the wheel kick. Okay, so we got that out of the way. That's the last of the Kempo step moves. Let's look at how they track. Low first. Okay, not very good tracking at all. Look at that. I can do it. I can step. I can walk really early. That's really bad. If the low track's that bad, that essentially means I could just do this. Oh, no, no. I still have to time if I do that. But that essentially means if I time it right, I could step guard this, right? That seems to be good for step, actually, not walk. All right, you know what? All right, so I, I can't really step it. All right, so it's not that bad. Not as bad as I thought. If it was that easy to just step it, it's that easy to walk it, though. But walking means you have to commit and risk getting hit by some stray mids. Let's see. So that was one. That's a fucking high. All right, see, that'll catch you if you commit to your walk. But there's no actual tracking in it. As long as you time it. Okay, no track in here. Well, of course, I tested that. There's no reason to test that shit. There's nothing else here, right? Yeah, no, that's about it. Alright, so next we got quarter circle forward stuff. And I'm nearing three hours here. All right, roll dash, if you will. I used to be pretty good at DDR, but was completely isolated from anything FGC sports related. <laughs> uh, what's going on? What's going on? Is this a true snake dash or just a cross dash? Um, snake dash is a thing. It's not. I could show you. I think. Let me see. No, I don't. Um, I can't show you actually because I have to plug in the pad. I could do snake dash on pad. Any character that has a roll dash can snake dash snake dash is just canceling sidestep into course to go forward over and over again that's why so it's like you're moving like a snake that's what's going on that's why it's called snake dash any character that has this can snake dash my friend used to do that shit with brian like crazy on his pad he would be like i'm like what the fuck and then bam while standing three dumbass he played 5.0 brian like a fucking dirtbag he did all that shit he couldn't do taunt jet upper but he had taunt three plus four down on lock so he was scary enough at the fucking wall. You don't need Taunt Jet Upper in 5.0. You just need Taunt 3 plus 4 to be scary with Brian. In DR also, not just 5.0. He still had that in DR. <clears throat> so anyway. Um, yeah, so I can't do it on stick, but you can still do Snake Dash with Feng. I just, I can't do it on stick. Maybe, if, maybe whenever I can afford a... Um, a, uh, what do you call it? A, uh, what the fuck is it called? Hitbox. I'll be able to better do it. On pad, I could do it easily. When I used to play pad a lot. <clears throat> so the best pad for Tekken was a broken in PSP pad. I'm not kidding when I say that. I was able to light dash on that thing. When you break in the PSP pad, nothing was better. Because it was, the buttons were small enough and close together enough that it was easier you have to move your thumb a lot less to get to get your inputs in than you did, did on a bigger PS2 pad or PS3 or whatever. <sighs> Alright, so uh quarter circle forward one. So that's the low shoulder. We talked about this several times throughout this review. 
I did at least. It's negative 14 on block. You cannot low parry this because he's hitting you with a shoulder. So you cannot low parry that. Uh, but it's negative 14 on block. Plus two on hit. Does not force crouch. And on counter hit, he gets a juggle. Now, I don't know if that's the only pickup. It's not the only pickup. Aw. Oh, I got that by accident. He got a back turn? Is that like a setup? Is that a known setup? Why'd he get a back turn there? Oh. You don't want to drop that. Okay, I thought so. Alright, so same situation seems like, right? If they tech... I guess if he taps straight up, then he gets a back turn. And he, you will hit him the back with that so don't get it don't if you if he adds a juggle with four three four on you don't stand straight up never ever ever stand straight up holding back seems to be the best thing plus four there we go um you can do forward three four forward plus one forward one plus two forward three four hey Four, three, four, forward, one, okay. I got a dash for it, okay. Oh, well, maybe not. Wait, what am I doing? Sixty-three. All right, there you go. You just need to delay the forward three while holding forward a little bit. Yeah, cool. Second forward one is very good, very very good. So jet upper was easier in DR. You are right about that because jet upper was thirteen frames in DR. That's why. But um, really, what you really needed with I mean, tall jet upper was good. Was obviously really good. You needed that, but. Really, with Brian at the wall, you didn't need the like. It's it's way harder now to do the back four than it was to do taunt into three plus four in DR. It was way easier to get the wall splat in DR at 5.0 because it's just taunt three plus four. Three plus four was like 14 frames or some shit or 15. While back four, if I'm not mistaken, is like frame perfect now, isn't it? And essentially, it was the easiest wall juggle ever. It was just like three plus four back dash down back two. They float re splat dash up forward one two one. If it's 5.0, you do the same thing and just add a snake edge in the end, guaranteed. If they stay, they have to stay down to eat the snake edge. If they tech, snake edge hits them. Down plus three plus four, two three, snake edge again, and that would kill them. If they did, if you did wall carry and you ate a taunt. Uh, if he did the wall carry and did the snake edge and you ate a taunt, he would kill you. If he did the, the, the wall carry and ended it with snake edge and you didn't know that you had to stay down and eat the snake edge and you tech, he'd kill you. He'd kill you. As, as if it was one juggle. Just off a of jet upper. That's how crazy that damage was. And still, it still was that crazy in DR. He just lost the ability to get the free snake edge. That's all that, that's all that really happened there. <clears throat> so anyway um, oh yeah we're talking about core circuit forward one so yeah so you got those pickups there and it's really good <laughs> some characters can launch uh, 14 or 13 frame while standing he seems to recover crouching so if you come up with a while standing high like a capo I think he recovers crouching here I can't tell to be honest with you. 
Does he? Oh, no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Yeah, no. He doesn't. Okay, so anybody with a, including Capos, will be able to launch that. Uh, including Eddie. There's no only one Capo now. So, be mindful of that. How does this track? It's kind of hard to step. Yeah, if you're just kind of step canceling, this should, this will still clip you. You kind of have to commit, or it's time shit really well. Even then, look at that. It's very difficult to move around this. Like fairly, not very, fairly difficult, I'll say. It seems to be easier to go right. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just Feng or me. But if you if you commit to a walk, oh no, maybe not. If you commit to a walk right. Yeah, if you commit to a walk right, you seem to consistently beat this. Oh, man. But you have to, like, commit to a walk. Which I don't like doing too much. That's when you start getting hit by straight, like, shoulders and shit like that. Alright, so next we got Corsica Forward 2. This is a launcher. So the thing about Corsica Forward 1, right? That's your basic low for whatever mix-up you're going to do out of Corsica Forward. You want them to see this quarter circle forward. You want them to see that, right? Typically, usually. And then it puts this in their mind. Anybody who knows even like a little bit about Feng, and even if they don't know, you'll get them to respect this fairly quick. 23 damage is a lot of damage, right? Um, and it's not seeable, it's 22 frames, so it's not like a raw seeable move, but that's the whole point of getting them to see this because that opens up all of these mids. All of the, wait, that opens up. Wait, hold forward. Hold four. There he goes. Right, you gotta hold four for this. If you hold four, you get that. If you hold three for the buffer, he's gonna do the low. And if you try to press it raw, he gets the low. So hold four, down forward, four, three for four. I talked about this last time. So it opens up all these other mids you could do. All because of this. All because of that low, sorry. Right? It opens up everything. So, that's when you get shit like that, right? That's your high risk one. The exact same speed as the low, and it's a mid, which means it's a true mix up. Uh, like there's no fuzzy that's gonna beat it. It's all dependent on your time. You can kind of vary the timing anyway, even if there was a difference in the speed, a small difference. Of course, looking forward to is negative 14 on block also. It is uh, one of those super high launches that does a lot of damage, so he probably gets a better juggle, doesn't he? Or is it the same juggle as always? Close circle forward, down forward three. Oh, what do you know? Close circle forward, down forward three. Yet another one, and it gives you a launcher. True. Forgot about that. I replaced the cable. I replaced the USB cable. You can do forward three, four, one. Oh, yes. yeah, I read that already. Sorry. Um. So you can go into the standard shit, but it launches really high, so... Okay, so it's still forward one plus two for him, right? Even though it launches that high, huh? Alright. No biggie. I mean, you, you get this, you still got the usual. Except that's a high damage launcher, so 65 is not bad. Alright, so anyway. That's Core Circle Forward 2. And then we get Core Circle Forward 1 plus 2. The good old headbutt. This is plus 5 on it, hit on crowd, on, on block. Plus five on block, forces crouch. Plus nine on regular hit, forces crouch. Knocks down on counter hit. All right, you got a stomp. I don't think you got a pickup. No, you don't. So you got a stomp. All right. Oop, that's not it. Uh, is that guaranteed? Oh boy. Oh man, that's brutal. 24 damage. Oh shit. Hold back actually works. Okay. Alright, so you gotta stomp. Maybe I was slow there, but you definitely gotta stomp at least.
<laughs> Only stompers. All right. There you go. Um, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> all right. Well, there you go. Um, so you can hold back to get away from the from the four four three. So go for the regular stomp down plus both kicks. Uh, really good move, obviously. I don't mean. Do I really need to tell you that? The only thing about it is it pushes back. So despite the plus five. In the middle of the stage, keep in mind, back dash will get you away from pretty much a lot of the lows, right? Let's see? Look at that, even down back three. Of course, of course, will go forward one is still a threat, but that has a lot of range naturally. It stops the low pokes. Ooh, look at that. Down four has a shitload of more than down back three? Really? Let's see. Plus frames is enough to keep you in range for the down back three. Oh wow, look at this. It forces cross two. Alright, let's switch sides, asshole. Oh, look at that. Down back three, legit low here. Nice. It's dangerous though because it's uh, negative 15. So be careful with that. But it's good enough. Even the dreaded up forward two loses. Yeah. All right, so you can do a down four for a safer option, and he has to guess yeah. low parry or low block. Uh, frame trap, uh, the down four is, yes, because down four is 14 frames. Down back three, no. Down back three is, uh, 16 frames. So, uh, a wall standing, a wall standing four will exchange. It's still a great option. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? Think about this for a second. If if you're going against me and I'm responding with like while standing four, it goes all right. Yeah, all right. The damage in this case is in my favor, sure, because Feng's while standing four hits harder than most. Twenty-one damage on counter hit. But you know what? You got me to swing at uh, at at negative five, right? Not only that, you got me to swing with a linear move. Why? Eat, you know, you could frame trap me, sure. You know, risking a hop kick, which if I decide not to swing, you get blown up, right? Because probably if I backdash instead, right? If I backdash and you decide I'm going to hop kick this fool, right? Because then the hop kick will beat out my wall standing four, right? Let's just say, for example, my wow, wow, wow. Feng's hop kick is shitty. Let's talk in hypotheticals, though, right? Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, see, because they, oh, like this fool's all standing for him, I'll just frame trap him with a hot kick, right, for example. But then if I just decide to backdash, you're going to get fucked up, right? And then you get to eat the hot yeah. <laughs> You get to eat something. There you go. You get to eat a forward 3-4 for your troubles, right? On reaction. So, why do that when, when if your read is, hey, this guy's going to, he might press something, and, it, and instead of, like, forcing your frame matches, why not just... Backdash, and then if I do something, hop kick. I'm just recording that to show you a whiff punish. Well, all right, that was a bad example, but get a shoulder locked and loaded, or get something else, something rewarding locked and loaded, and whiff punish me instead. Because then if I do nothing, if I backdash, nothing, you don't risk anything. But if I do something, you gain everything. Rather than forcing a plus for you know forcing a, a plus frame situation that I could actually punish theoretically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, things hawking is shit. <laughs> Not much you can do about that. But I'm talking in hypotheticals here. My my hawking example isn't good for Feng, 
because Vex Hawking is shitty, but this is just a, like a universal thing to think about. Yeah, it's plus five, but that spacing is weird. A lot of your mids are probably going to whiff, not just the hog kick, right? So if I decide to do nothing but backdash, because you decided to force your mix up, like I'm going to go mid this time, I get way more reward even though the mix up is in your favor, should be in your favor, theoretically, on paper in your favor, and I'm at negative five. I get way more reward because you try to go mid and get like heavily rewarded because I swung last time, right? When, but then you could turn the plus five still into a safe situation and get the same reward by you doing the back dash or a sidestep, doing nothing, you know, not pressing your advantage. You get the same reward if I press something, but if I press nothing, you don't risk anything. You get what I'm saying? Lasagna layers. Of course, you could also do the Bronson special that he was talking about on stream, the dash block. <laughs> and then if you block a hot kick, you can just block punish it, which is not as rewarding as a whip punish, but still. You get all these things to think about. You don't have to force a mix-up. Sure, the low is uh, uninterruptible, the down four, which gives you basically a true 50-50. Yeah, but I could punish your 50-50, you know? What mid are you going to do from that range that I can't find a way to get around? Sure, I can't get around the low. But what mid are you gonna do from that range that where that uh, unless I'm Gigas, I can't find a way to get around. Yeah, I can't find a way to get around, sorry. Let's see. Even bears will be able to backdash and fucking twin pisses your ass for doing something off that. Right, let's do fish hook. Safest shit in the world. Can I backdash that? Look at that. I didn't even need a backdash. I just needed to hold back. I just needed to hold back. I just needed to hold back. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. My mother's letting me know she's going to bed. She's just had surgery, so. Thankfully, she doesn't need help like she used to when she had the hand surgery, but she has a she had a leg surgery. So anyway, there's no mid that you can do, right? Probably. And if you do do a mid that reaches, it's either going to be shoulder, which is unsafe, very unsafe, or slow. Too slow to really do anything about the plus five. Try down forward fours and mid. Sure, it probably is, it's gonna work better. Can I step it? Let's see. Oh, I could step it. I probably can't backdash it. Nope, because the range is good, but I could step it. See, there's a high chance that there's some option you could do that I could punish very hard. Unless you're like at plus eight and right in my face. And even then, I could low parry the low. Right? So, you have to take some sort of risk when you press a button. That's why sometimes it's perfectly valid, even if you put yourself at plus eight, plus nine. It's totally valid to do nothing. You don't have to do something. You really don't. Now, more often than not, if you get a plus nine or a plus eight, you should do something, sure. But, you know, you gotta pay attention to certain factors. Like, what's your life lead like? If I have this gigantic life lead, right? And I have my opponent at like this much life, like just this theory crafting, I probably don't do this during a matches because I don't play enough to like think this far ahead. But like this is just theory crafting for a moment here. You could force the mix up, but you're essentially giving your opponent a chance to come back because they probably have rage. And if they get one low parry, they're gonna take off half life plus if they're, you know, more than half life. If floor breaks involved, walls are involved, geese is stays involved, they could do a lot more damage, right? Depending on the character, right? Or I could just get this frame advantage, just go mid. It's a, people always say, go mid, go mid. Or just back off. And then maybe I'll hit you later with the low. Just make you think about it. Because then if you're like committing to something, you know, like a ducking or whatever, you, it, it just fucks with your head. It fucks with your opponent's head. It really does. Like, why take the risk of like forcing a mix-up where if I guess wrong because I'm a low parry or they sidestep or they just mashed and I was like I fucked up my timing you know 
I tried to be cute and go for something delayed and they mashed, you know, why take any of that risk when you have like a strong lead and you really don't have to take that risk. And you can just kind of stand here and bait something, you know? Just think about that. Let it go, let it go. Alright, um... So that's the headbutt. Very good move, still. Beside all that bullshit I just talked. Uh, on hit, it also forces some spacing, but it's plus nine, so it's way better. Um, and then on counter hit, you get a free stomp. Which his stomp breaks the floor, doesn't it? Alright, and then next is Corsica go forward three plus four. What the fuck? Oh! Core circle for the plus four just goes into shifting clouds. That's it. So it's another way to go to go into shifting clouds. So if you let people see the crouch dash, you can parry them, I guess, if they get too match friendly. This is another way to get that going on. Which is nice, I guess. I mean, you could just cancel it with a dash and do it the regular way too, but it's built into the core circle forward, I guess. Can you core circle forward into Kempo? Yeah, uh... Alright, you, you you have to cancel with a sidestep. Tap up. Just like they, like, they, like Dragon Off. Think like Dragon Or like Brian's uh, back three cancel. See? You can do it very fast if you get good at this. I'm not particularly great. But while you're in the course of the forward motion, you cannot. Uh... By the way, I think the one mentioned it, but you actually get forward almost directly followed to counter hit Corsica forward one. What's Corsica forward one? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it was mentioned. Oh no, you, no, no, actually that's not what I did. Is it? I think that was mentioned before. How does that work? I'm doing that. It seems like if I mash it, I don't get it. I have to time it. I'm mashing. Huh. It seems finicky, dude. You think it's an access issue? You know, when I watch like people play Feng and even me, there are times where this this forward one plus two shit just whiffs during certain situations. And I'm wondering, is it an access issue? See? He wasn't on Axis there. I know that. It, it, I was looking at it there. I think it's Axis then. I wouldn't... And that makes me say I, I wouldn't want to do that, dude. You know? It seems like Axis... It seems to be finicky off Axis. At least in this matchup. See? Uh, off Axis to the left looks good. Yeah, see? Off Axis to the left looks good. But off Axis to the right... Whiffs. It's not good at all. Connor goes to go forward one. Yeah, see. I had a feeling. I mean, it probably lands because you happen to connect it in situations where it'll land more often. It might just be like a matchup thing, also. Maybe just on Feng, it's not as consistent. That, that, you know. Like, you know who, who felt like that? Miguel. Miguel, like, is. He's one of the characters that suffers the worst from being off axis. His shit looks like this is gonna connect for sure, and they just barely fall out of it. And he loses like more than half his damage. It's crazy. Miguel gets fucking wrecked off axis. He has to do all sorts of weird ass shit, which makes it really, which makes him annoying to use. Certainly made him annoying when I was using him. Um, uh, it's not consistent on a lot of characters. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, you just don't use it off axis to the right. It is max damage. Yeah, of course it's max damage, definitely for sure. All right, well, if you're able to tell your access and convert properly, which you can, that's a, that is a slow move, so you, you, 
confirm that, I think. Off axis. Yeah, I guess you just adjust accordingly. I don't know. It's one of those where you practice it, you'll get the feel for it. If you're a fan player. Which I am not. Um, Alright, so course of course, before was the uh, shifting clouds. Now, I do have to work tomorrow, and it's 12 a.m. So, if I want to make a part three, this seems like a good place to stop. Because all I have left is back turn. And then I have uh, throw Oki and throws, and then wall stuff, which she has a lot going on. So that's a, uh, that seems to be, this seems to be a consistent place where I usually cut it off, right? So, uh, what is it? I'm almost four hours in, guys. I should probably call it here. Because it's going to, it's going to take me like another hour and a go, or hour and a half to go through the rest of this stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it here. What's up, Gonzo Griff? Alright, so I haven't, I'm going to upload this to YouTube when I finish the whole thing and upload it all in one shot rather than uploading in as I go on. Uh, but for now, I'm going to call it. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I hope y'all have a good night. Is there anybody to host? It's like Bloodhawk or somebody streaming? Uh, no. Wow, everybody's vamooshed. Alright, well... Have a good night, everybody. I'll see you guys soon. Next time I stream, I'll play, I'll play some Nayo, and then whenever I stream after that, I'll finish off thing. So uh, I might pop by, pop, pop by tomorrow with some Nayo. But uh, next time I see you guys, uh, well, whatever that may be, have a good one until then. Adios.